this going to work today? I uh, hope this is working. All right, we're connecting. Let's see who's here. Oh, we got some people here. Hey, Joshua. Hey, Tina. Hey, Joe. Hey, Carol. Uh, it's a late site. It's a day late. <laughs> I tried to stream last night. I've been having such difficulties this week. It's really frustrating. But uh, we're here tonight. Hopefully, some people want to see some comics. I'm hoping for a good audience tonight. I got a ton to go through, a ton to talk about. See if you guys see me. Hey, Matt. Okay. I, uh, I can, I guess I should start going. Or I'll, I'll start that video right here. Hey, rookie. Oh, hey, Ryan. Okay, let's do this. All right. Hello, my YouTube friend, Pop Comics here. And in today's video, we're going to go through like a bajillion comic books. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so, um, these comics here, these are from, uh, Street Side Anthony. I, uh, so he contacted me about a month ago. And he said he had a room full of comic books. Uh, if you guys don't know, Street Side Anthony buys and sells so many. Like, there'll be weeks where he'll literally buy three, four, five collections of 50 long boxes. So he buys a lot of comic books. He flips them wholesale often. And uh, he has big sales. Lots of people in the New York community know him. He's a great, amazing guy. So he has this room of comic books that were all... Uh, like what he said was they were spec books, books he put to the side because he thought they'd be worth something in the future, uh, books he didn't know quite or it was just taking too long for him to figure out the value or stuff he just wasn't ready to sell. So he filled up this whole room. Street Side Anthony is amazing. So he filled up this whole room of stuff and he realized that he's not being able to buy as many collections as he would like because he doesn't have the room. And I mean, he buys collections and he'll buy collections with, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 other books in it. He doesn't really want to grind out for these like three to five dollar books. So he contacted me. And I think um, Billy from Queen's Comic Party also said that he should contact me. So he contacted me and he said, Sean, I have these comics. It's a, I think at the time it was 189 long boxes. It's up to about 200 now. And he said, uh, here, I'm going to show you another comic. So this is one of the comics. Uh, we got a nice, beautiful Christy Zulo and we got an Archie joke book. All right, we got a few comics there. So. I don't have $20,000 to come up with just to buy it all straight out. So I thought about it. I told him I was really interested. I wasn't sure, you know, how I'd be able to do it. I was trying to brainstorm. I was having kind of a hard time figuring out exactly how to do it. So he said, why don't I, he actually, he picked me, I don't drive. So he picked me up, brought me to uh, the Bronx and um, I spent a day digging through comics. So we basically, I said, Anthony, you know what? Can I buy part of the collection and work my way through it? And he's like, well, you know, he, he doesn't want to give away that many comics to begin with if we're going to do that. So we worked it out where I filled up, well, I said seven long boxes for 300 a piece. And he said, well, how about six long boxes um, plus uh, he gave me uh, a short box I had pulled out before I started digging through the collection of stuff from his regular for sale stuff. And he gave it, he just rounded it to 2000 bucks. So I gave him 2000 bucks for the first batch of comic books. And um, I pulled out tons of stuff from my shop this time. I'm going to start focusing on my shop with this collection i've been meaning to put a lot more comic books out so i uh, in the first week you know i've only had them four days and in the first week we sold i think three or four hundred dollars worth and i've only put out one of the six long boxes like i've been slowly pricing them out so i have a really good feeling about it this week i'm gonna pick up another giant batch from him and uh we're just i'm gonna just sell my way through it. i think it's gonna work out for both of us uh but this is my keepers out of the seven long boxes i think i kept two short boxes i filled up with my keepers it might be a little bit more but that's what we're going to go through first so what did i pay i paid two thousand for six long boxes and a short box that's uh 1500 comics so i paid i like a dollar 30 a comic book so for the keepers let's see what kind of stuff and what's going to happen is the money i gave them will go towards the total of the twenty thousand. so after I buy some of the better books from him, actually filling up books and choosing what I wanted to buy, I'll probably at the end end up with like, you know, 50 or 100 long boxes that are free or super duper cheap. But that would be cheaper stuff. Um, oh, and the other thing I want to discuss before we get into this, I uh, also want to know if it is live today. I also want to know um, if there's anything people want to buy. Well, no, what I'm hoping is by the next month, by the time I get to New York Comic Con, I'm hoping that I sell enough of the comic books that I'm buying from him to kind of break even. Because it is 50,000 comic books for like probably about 40 cents each. 
Uh, I picked out each book. So each one of these are ones I picked out. Like, uh, you know, Jimmy Olsen for $1.30 is like a definitely that's a nice uh, go, Silver Age, Archie dollar twenty dollar thirty. Yes. Cause he's, so what's going to happen is I'm pay, I was paying up front. I actually, I dug through 18 boxes. So about 10% of the collection. I pay, From the 10%, I paid him 10% of what he wanted for just what I kept. So there's another 18 boxes that essentially I'll get free in like a month or whenever I can actually pay up for the whole collection. So he wanted me to actually pick out as much good stuff as possible because he knows the stuff that I sell out up front. Like, I mean, I'm bad. I end up, I was trying not to pick anything for myself, but like I saw stuff like this. I was like, you know, I love my Archies. I'm like, all right, I, got I mean, that's an awesome cover. Here, we'll go to the next one. Uh, Life with Archie, number 92. Uh, nice, beautiful Magnus robot fighter. Um, so... I got to pick out the first six boxes, and I, I picked out some stuff that was $20. I think I found a book or two that was like 100 bucks. So there's value in there. He wanted me to pull out the value because he knows the more I can sell up front. Hey, Jason, the more I can sell up front, the more I'll have for him. So the, like the first week, I gave him $2,000. In a few days, I think I'm already up to $3,000 to buy the next batch. So that's within 10 days. It means I've paid for 15% of the collection. So I, I think it's going to work out for me. I think it's going to work out for Anthony. And I'm excited too because I know if this is successful in the shop where I'm selling a lot of comics, then I'm able to go to Anthony pretty often to pick up stuff because he buys so many comics. Um, <laughs> well, thanks for staying up, Jason. I should be going to sleep. I've been dying to do a video all week. It's like I've been having such a bad time with so many things breaking and and just uh, not feeling the best and mentally breaking down a bit. It just, I had had to do it. Uh, now, there was no golden age. That would have been awesome at $1.20. There's, so the thing is, the key, big key issues he will pulled out, you know, over the years as he collected. It would have been stuff like this where he wasn't quite sure what to do because, um, honestly, I've had Ryan just robot fighter comics in my shop and they don't sell very well. They have value, but it wasn't something that he could sell well locally. So that's why he had it. Like, this is his room for the stuff that he thought was a value, but that, you know... Mm, I couldn't, couldn't sell today. Yeah, I'm talking about Anthony. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, we're working out a deal so I can help him clear out his uh, overstock uh, spec stuff so that he can um, buy more collections again. I know he's like dying. He actually said he took a like kind of a month off from buying because he's so overloaded with stuff. So uh, I'm gonna help him um, get through all this. I'm happy to be on the interwebs. Well, for some reason, I'm only going at 30 frames per second. All right, I'm going to move the comics very slowly. Uh, the stream seems kind of acting up right now. Oh, wait, you know what it is? Maybe it's not set. It's not set fast enough. Hold on one second. Let me see if... Uh, streaming... Okay. Uh, um, account... Uh, account settings... Nope, that's not that... Uh, um, streaming 1080 1080 okay uh, 60 frames uh, alright hold on one second I uh, for some reason this was not set up properly I'm trying to get this set up properly I, I love Magnus Robofighter they really are amazing to me Oh, 45 cents each? That's awesome. That's a great price on any comic books. Exactly. Locally, they don't sell much, but in uh, uh, online, they sell for a fortune. They're expensive. Okay, wait. Let me... One more setting. Streaming. Thirteen. Okay, hold on one second. I'm just... Uh, I just noticed that this app has been... Act okay, we're back at the full uh, speed, so we should be not lagging or anything. Okay. Oh, man, this app, they did, like, an update a week ago, and it's really been such a, uh, a problem for me. Um, okay, so uh, where was I saying? So... Uh, oh, so I, on my, I have a website I made, like, a month or two ago for selling. There's a link in the description. In a week or two or in a few days, I want to make up... Uh, short boxes of comics for people to buy just because i'm gonna be buying so much from anthony i'm not gonna be able to sell at the volume that i'm buying so i'm i want to put together one to three hundred dollars short boxes where each short box is a themed so like for maybe 150 dollars you get a short box full of green lantern 
or for like $300, maybe a short box full of, of nicer modern Spider-Man books, that kind of stuff. So I, uh, if any of you guys want or are interested in a short box of comics, you let me know what you want and I'll try to make some boxes up for you guys. Um, oh, I hate these stickers on comics. That is, uh, so. Oh, is it actually, is it really funny right now? Picture is gone. Okay, let me, um, restart the, the actual, uh, okay, it should be better now. I know I never use 720 because I don't want a crappy picture. I just had to reset my, uh, I, it, it, what happened was it reset all the settings to way too low. I didn't realize it was at 720, 30 frames. It's supposed to be 1080, 60 frames. I'm paying a big, giant, expensive uh, streaming bill so I can stream in higher quality. I want that high quality. If I'm paying for it, I'm going to use it. All right. Uh, hopefully, the screen looks okay now. Hopefully, it's not a crazy looking screen. Otherwise, I don't know what to do. <laughs> no. I've already lost my audience. I'm really so sick of uh, technology not working. Okay, hopefully the picture looks okay now. Uh, okay, good now? Okay. All right, let's um, start going through the comic books. Again, if you guys want me to put up, uh, like, make short boxes of comics to sell, uh, I will start doing that as I'm going through Anthony's stuff. But for now, I'm going to show you my keepers. I might stream sometime later this week. I'll show you the bins that I'm filling up with comics. Okay. So Street Fighter, like a dollar twenty, I just I had to grab all these. Some of them will be duplicates. I probably have them, so I have to go through and see what I have and need to get rid of. But for now, I was like a dollar twenty. That's going into my keeper pile. Keeper pile. I love uh, Silver Age books, Golden Age books. Uh, Warfront Dynamite Joe number thirty nine, lower grade, but dollar twenty, not bad. Uh, Phantom Stranger number one, like a little bit better key issue, not in the greatest shape, but that's probably like a twenty dollar book. Uh, that Wilkins Boy number nine, loved. You know, this kind of goofy, archy stuff. Uh, Strange Adventures, number 240. Beautiful sci-fi book. Debbie Dates, number 5. Um, these are probably $1.20 is about what they're... Um, uh, one, I would take uh, like a blow dryer or something to heat it up and see if you can slowly peel it away. If you can slowly peel it away and get the sticker off... That's the best way. Now, if it leaves a little bit of sticker residue, I've had some luck using the um, Abzerine book cleaner, and I just kind of rub it into the sticker, and then I kind of roll the Abzerine off, throw that out, put a little bit more, and get as much of the sticker stuck into the Abzerine, and I actually got it off. Right. Oh, wow. Thank you, Matt. That You just made my day. Thank you. I've had such a rough week. This is really... Um, uh, that is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so I think, yeah, exactly. Watch the tutorials, but a heat gun, not heat gun, but the heat gun's too hot. A hair dryer, heat up the sticker so that it, it can come off more easily. Try to peel it off as cleanly as you can, and then use the Absorine. Uh, the other thing I sometimes do is I tap it with some masking tape to kind of see if I can get the sticker to come off a little bit. It's a very slow process, though. It's going to take you like 20, 30 minutes. So honestly, if you're buying a book with a sticker on it, and it's only a dollar book or $2 book, and you don't want the sticker on, it's probably better just to wait. It's only if you're um, going to buy like a $20 book that's a dollar, then it's kind of worth the effort. Okay, so these, the dollar twenty I paid is probably like right near what I should be paying for these. But I absolutely love the um, Rumiko Takahashi artwork on these. I just think her artwork is just beautiful. Beautiful 1980s, um, gorgeous manga. So we got uh, amazing... Uh, uh, I can't even say that. <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, Ranma, one half. More of her work. Uh, that was issue 9, issue 11, issue 10. Uh, uh, X-Men Red for Jen Bartel. This is probably just a 3 or $4 book. But I love Jen Bartel, so I had to grab that. Uh, Unsacred 7. So some of the stuff I was just grabbing because it's obviously some of my favorite. Uh, Archie meets the Ramones, number 1. I don't know how expensive this comic is, but this is super, super amazing. I think it's a, just a really, really cool uh, book. Hey, Kiwi Cards. Uh, Archie meets Glee, a Dan Parent cover. I don't know if this is like a really rare expensive variant, but again, for like $1.20, I'm willing to pick up stuff if it just looks cool and it's uh, kind of cheap. Um, Betty and Veronica, six twenty five, another awesome Dan Parent cover. Love that. Uh, six, like these, I, was, I grabbed the kind of sell because Archie sells well, and then I just thought... 
as I was pricing stuff out. I'm really bad because a lot of stuff I grabbed just to price out and put into the shop. But then as I was doing it, I was just like, oh, I kind of want to keep that. And I have a feeling some of these issues might be like $20 issues. So it'd probably be hard to get again. Uh, Sweetheart, number one, an Action Lab horror book. Uh, he had some um, early uh, zombie tramps. I th it might be the first series, but he wasn't quite sure on the price. So he's holding those until he can kind of figure out the price for me. Uh, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. This is a rare variant. Uh, Geiger, number one. This is the kind of stuff. He had a lot of spec books like this in the collection. So I think I end up with just holding on to a lot of them. Because they might only be 3 or $4 now. But they have really, really high potential. Uh, okay. And then half this um, box was also... Yeah, so some of the stuff is stuff that he... Um, that I picked out of his regular boxes and he gave them to me for like 80% off his price. Like he gave me such a fantastic deal on the stuff I was buying just for myself. So uh, Action Lab, Zombie Trap 11. I don't know if this is an earlier issue or not. Uh, I gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Uh, okay, yeah. All right, so more early Zombie Tramp. I think this is the second series though. I'm not 100% sure on these. Uh, really awesome, nope, not double book. A really awesome uh, Dawn Matee, Sabine Rich mashup on um, uh, one of the Rothic books. I forget what Rothic book that was, but I mean, super cool book. I love both those artists. A uh, limited to 750, Wonderland number 50, some gold uh, highlight on there, cool cover. Uh, Sabine Rich, Wonderland 43, love her artwork. Uh, Rem 8, Dawn Matee, Sabine Rich colored book love that uh eboss sabine rich colored rem eight number three uh okay we had one golden age uh, i'm still working on i've sold about three thousand pops i i maybe 3200 now so i'm still trying to pull out two to three hundred a week it's slow going because the market's very slow right now but i'm still selling most of my sales in pops in the shop i actually bought two collections this week too I bought uh, like a $2,000 collection I paid like $600 for. I'm paying really, I'm paying like a third of the value at the moment. And um, I bought uh, another collection that had a whole bunch of autograph stuff in it, which was cool. Uh, this is cool. Blondie number 30. Man, that's awesome. Oh, can't show that. All right. So we got a ah, Nathan Zerdy, uh, expensive, expensive, naughty book. That one I'm going to put to the side. Uh, Rian Gonzalez, Spider Woman number five. Thought that was super cool. Uh, another fun, like really, really early Silver Age or late Golden Age. Um, let's see, United States Fighting Air Force number 12. This is the stuff I got really excited for. Um, oh, hey, Nerdscape. How are you? And then we got, oh, this is one I've wanted for a while that I missed out on. It's the Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 32. Uh, it's a key issue. I believe it's the first appearance of his daughter. Not yeah, I'm pretty sure it's her first appearance. Uh, kind of a pricey book, maybe like thirty bucks. So I got a really good price on that one. That was one I really wanted. Uh, Death Force number three, another awesome Sabine Rich book. Yeah, I still I still do content on the Pop Channel. I just I separated it because the algorithm does not like you to um do different kind of content because if pop people don't like comic content they don't watch the comic ones and then it just kills the channel and then it takes me like three or four videos to build it up again it's actually really frustrating uh something's killing the children number 12 a beautiful peach mocha cover uh a jen bartel not jen bartel jenny friesen uh i forget what comic this is is it department of truth i forget but that's a cool virgin variant i think he gave me that one for like two bucks um, America and Delph, oh, Virgin Variant. I'm not sure what series that is, but that's awesome. Love her artwork. Uh, oh, and then he had a whole bunch of these Lady Mechanica books. These are, I think, kind of pricey, actually. Number three. Uh, number four. This is a Kenneth Rockefort. Is that his name? I love his artwork. Every time I see it, I just love the way he uses all these, like, angles and stuff. Really cool artwork. Uh... Let's see, Lady Mechanica, the collected edition. So this is a reprint of number one and zero. Uh, Lady Mechanica, what number is this? Number two, and that's the rare variant. I think that that's actually quite a expensive. Uh, hey, Reed. Yeah, no, I got so much. Uh, I have three channels now. I have a walking channel, too, where I just walk around and, and uh, mumble about stuff. <laughs> uh, Lady Mechanica number two. Like, I was really excited to see a whole run of these because I do this series. I love the covers on them so much. 
Uh, number five. Uh, not sure what series that is, but just a fun virgin variant. Uh, Muffy the Pimp Slayer, number one. This one is signed by three people, I believe. And it's a really awesome Ivan Tao cover. Although I don't think Ivan Tao signed it. That is super cool. Really happy with that. Uh, Lady Mechanica, the Monster of the Ministry of Hell, number three. That's a J. Anna Cleto cover. Gorgeous cover. And uh, number one, third print, I believe. Um, yeah, just trying to see if I see... Uh, all right, just trying to keep up with your chat. I'm looking at the comics and not at the thing. I need. I know the Lady Mechanica covers are beautiful. They're some of my all-time favorites from the last 20 years or so. I um I need to get a better live streaming setup. Like one day, I just I want a beautiful, beautiful, fully set up live streaming area so I can just do it more often and not stress out about it. Like right now, it's just like ugh, I have to stress about about it every time. Uh, crossover number one. This is the one in 25 variant. I think this could, if this ever becomes like a big television series or anything, this variant could end up being one that's worth hundreds. So that's hold on to. Uh, Alpha Flight 106. I have a bunch of these already in my collection. So I was going to sell it, but then I realized it was signed by um, Mark Pacella right there. So I was like, I'll keep that. I do like sign books. Uh, I think that's crossover. I don't know if it's one again or one of the other issues, but super cool virgin variant. Uh, a Ninja Turtle Virgin variant. I thought that was gorgeous. Uh, he had a lot of We Live. I think he was just specking on every one he got. He just threw into the spec room. So I just I grabbed a bunch of them, but I think there's a whole other like long box full. So we have We Live, The Age of Paladins, number one. I think that's one of the ratios. Uh, another number one from that series. So this is the second series. A third number one. Fourth number one. So I don't know if that's like a full set. Um... Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Peach Momoko version. Love that cover. That cover is gorgeous. And uh, Breer, number one, the Virgin variant. These are awesome. Okay, sweet. I'm happy that it's uh, streaming well. I uh, w The new update on this thing really just screwed up my streaming in the last week. Okay, we have... Uh, this is the... What is it? The Sandman... Dr the Dreaming... No, it's lock. Oh, it's a lock and key number one, but it's a, with salmon in it. Peach Mocha Virgin. How cool is that? That cover is gorgeous. I was like really thrilled to pick that one up. Uh, this beautiful Mark Brooks cover. I don't think that's his. That might be his signature. Not hundred percent sure, but I thought that was gorgeous. We have a. Um, Oh, Kiwi, that's crazy. Well, I'm happy I can share some comics and you get to enjoy some of them across the ocean. I would like to go down to uh, New Zealand and see what I could find. Like, really hunt it out. I wonder how, like, rare they are there. It would be kind of fun, actually, to hunt some rare stuff. Uh, another Peach Pomoko Virgin variant. Uh, most of these, I think, he ended up giving, giving to me for, like, three or four bucks. These are amazing. So we have a bunch of these Sketch Virgin variants, which I know are all ratios, I think, or just really rare versions of them. So I grabbed a whole stack of those. Uh, Steven Universe. No oh, Reed, thank you, Reed. I appreciate that. You guys, you guys are just too kind. This, this, uh... So it was his signature on the left. Yeah, so I, to me, it might be fun to actually try to track down some rare New Zealand comics just for the fun of it, for the hunt. Uh, Reed, you rock. Two thumbs up for Reed. Two thumbs up for Matt. Both of you guys rock. Um, Steven Universe number one. I really think Steven Universe is one of those shows that will have a really big cult following over time. So I'm going to start picking up a lot more of this kind of stuff to put away. I have a feeling, like, in the next 5, 10 years, it's going to explode. Once all the kids that were, like, 10 years old, when 10 to 15, when this came out, in 5 years, they'll be, like, 25, 30. So I have really, really high expectations for Steven Universe. So a couple number ones. It's the Virgin Variant, but I think even one blank cover is still... Uh, it's probably a little bit, maybe 15 bucks right now. Not 100% sure on that. Uh, we got the Sumerian number one. It's a Mercandelfo Virgin variant. How cool is that? I love her artwork. I had never seen that cover before. Amazing comic book. A uh, 1 in 25 Peach Momoko cover. That's uh, Something's Killing the Children 25. Really happy with that. That's awesome. Uh, Something is Killing the Children 12 Peach Momoko cover. He had a whole lot of these really amazing peach covers. Um, this is a Jenny Friesen. I'm not sure what series that is. Spanish, maybe not 100% sure. Amazing stuff, though. Uh, hi, Lisa. Hi, anyone that I missed. 
I mean, it's like I can't really look at the the way I'm hunched over. I can't really see what you guys are saying as I'm going through the comics. So I, I take a look every few minutes. Um, we got the Wind Virgin. Like, this is better than whatnot, honestly. He gave me such great prices on these. Like, I just want to buy from Anthony for now on. If I spend 20 grand a month, it's going to the street side. Because <laughs> he's just giving me stuff. Okay, this one. This is probably the, one of the coolest books I got. So this is the um, full first full appearance of the Rocketeer, but I picked this one up for Jason. So this that's Jason's copy. It's a nice looking copy. Uh, it might be a Nearman copy. I don't really see any kind of flaws. I didn't look at it out of the bag. I just looked to try to find the one that had the least flaws on it. So that's awesome. So happy I was able to get that for Jason. Uh, Adventure Time. So tonight's theme is going to be Adventure Time later on because I kind of gone crazy and I started buying a ton of Adventure Time comics before. Uh, I mean, again, I love Adventure Time. What I used to do is I used to buy uh, maybe like 100 Adventure Time comics on eBay and lots, pull out the ones I needed for my collection and sell off the duplicates to try to break even or make a little profit. I did that probably about six years ago and I stopped for some reason. Now with uh, the Fiona and Cake show that just came out, I'm like really hyped up that Adventure Time is going to move into the nostalgic era since it's now 10 years old. You're very welcome, Jason. Jason, very welcome. Yeah, Street Side Anthony is the best. He's amazing. Um, and I'm really happy he's work we worked out a, a deal so I can help, you know, he's gonna help me. I'm gonna help him, and I think it's gonna uh, help everyone because he's gonna be able to buy more uh comics. Um, so anyway, Adventure Time. I have I like Adventure Time, I think is one of the greatest modern cartoons. So I have a feeling the comics are gonna explode in value soon. They're not there yet, you can still get them cheap. I went a little nuts and I bought a ton on eBay. So I, I'm going to do a couple of Adventure Time lot openings tonight as well. Love Adventure Time, though. So really happy to grab that. Okay, let me clear those out. We have a lot of comics to go through tonight. <laughs> Hope you guys are ready for a big, long, long comic night. I'm actually really excited. Let me... I need to get a short box. Short box time. The only problem with uh, live stream is if I have to do something really quick, I can't edit that out. <laughs> I wish it was easier to edit live streams after you uh, broadcast them and just turn them into regular videos. Okay. All right. I know, and Anthony buys so many comics. That if I can find a way to sell a bunch of my shop and help him out and and just make it like a, a beneficial thing for everyone, I I want to buy a lot more from him than just online or from whatnot because I know I'm getting deals and I'm uh hey Scotty I, S S Scotty ID I did definitely I mean there was I was even going through stuff and Anthony's like oh you should grab that and it'll be like a ten or twenty dollar book. Just uh, because he wants me to do well, right? He does. That's the kind of thing he does. He helps hook up other vendors, and uh, he's just very positive, and uh, he's amazing, amazing. Uh, no, it's 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 close, but it's a little bit of a trip. Enough that's really annoying if I have to run back to the office to set things up. Uh, oh, expensive cardboard. I got your um. You sent me. You're the one who sent me the box of tapes and stuff, right? I got it a couple days ago. I just haven't had time to process it yet. I meant to tell you that. Uh, okay, next stack. Next stack. Uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Ham, number five. It's homage to... Um, what was it? ASM 238, I want to say. Is it 238? And it's got... Uh, uh, it starts with that. My brain is so blank right now. Uh, I use... Yeah, BCW because I get the wholesale cost. So it's like... Eight to ten dollars per hundred bags and boards, I think, and they're they're decent quality. I, I think they work out for the price. And when they're sold out, it really drives me nuts because I, you know, I go through a lot. So when I order from them, I order like ten thousand at a time. Uh, number one on that, uh, Merca and Dalfo Darkwing Duck number one. I thought that was amazing. Uh, Eight billion genies number one, the LCSD edition. So what is that coloring? Something, something. I'm not sure. <laughs> he had a lot of those in the uh, collection as well. I'm going to be grabbing a ton of those. Uh, Marvel Zombies Resurrection. The uh, Lee and Hill cover. Uh, we live... 
I'm not sure. Maybe the fifth printing, fourth printing. Again, he has so much We Live. I just, I'm going to hold on to all of it because I really love We Live. This is the third print, I think. Uh, Age of Paladins, number one. A uh, bunch of the C2E2 variants. Age of Paladins. So there are duplicates, but this stuff, like, I could put it out now for five or ten dollars, but I'm going to hold on to it because I, I have high hopes for a series of this. And, you know, because when's $5 today? If it goes up to, like, a few hundred dollars, I'll be like, what am I? Mojo, that's it. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Champions Outlaw, number one. I just grabbed it because I thought it was an amazing cover. I love the cover. I, you know, big fan of all the characters. So those are awesome. Uh, I usually get silver just for everything except for Golden Age because I'd rather just have a uniform size for my collection. So all the Silver Age, Bronze Age, and Modern can be together. And then um, one problem I found that I learned the hard way is if you have, let's say this is a Golden Age that's a little bit wider, and then you have a Silver Age that's slightly thinner. Uh, you If you have in the box and it's a little bit too tight, let's say the Silver Age goes over like that where it's um, it's a little too short and it doesn't quite cover the other book, you can end up pressing an indent into the book. So I like having a bunch of bags and boards all the same size, so they're less likely to end up with the different sizes will end up putting some imprints into your book. So that's something I like to avoid if I can. Hey, Marlana. Okay, I think I think I got everyone. Uh, questions okay so yeah there's a whole lot he had a whole other long box of we live like half of we live i was like ah i was going to try to grab it and but like i i ran out of space and he's like oh, i'll just you know he left it he said i won't even move it he just left it on top of the pile for me to grab next time <laughs> so next time i'll just grab it. i think every one of these also came with a card so there should be a little like card collection somewhere so yeah a whole bunch of these mask variants uh, more of these. Some of these, I think, are kind of the rare. Oh, yeah. There's the cards that go with them. Uh, some of these, like this says it's 1 in 15. I think some of these are even higher ratios. That says it's 1 in 15. Um, but, yeah. So, there's a whole bunch of duplicates. All What happens is, street, so many people know Street Side. He's so nice that he ends up buying, like, clearance stuff very cheap a lot of times. Uh, Carmen, number one. It's a little bit of a spec book. Um... X-Men 205, first appearance of Hope Summers. That's a pretty decent key, probably like 30 bucks because it's the second print variant that's a little bit rarer, I think. So that's a great one. Um, but yeah, no, you want your bags and boards. If you get, I I tend to like to get the Silver Age ones so that they're less likely to press into the book behind them because I've found it a hard way. I found a bunch of books that I had to have the little press in line. It's fun. It's like a post-apocalyptic survival. Uh, I don't know the newer. I think they're in go to space eventually, but it just it looks fun. Yeah, we live looks awesome. Uh, I'm lazy, so I keep most of my books facing forward because it makes it a lot harder to go through the books when they're face backwards and forwards. But technically, you should probably store them like this so that they're less likely the spine roll. But um, yeah, I'm kind of lazy. What? What I would love to do is, if I was rich enough, I would love to get uh, those store pol uh, folios where you fit, like, 20 books and just have it in a bookshelf. That would be, like, the most ideal way to store comics, but it would be really expensive because those are, like, $10 a piece. So that would be 50 cents a book, basically. If I had 100,000 books, that's $50,000 to do that. So I can't do that now, but I would love to do that one day. This is a really fun... Um, what do you call that? See my brain. I can't remember where it's where it's on both sides where it folds out. Fun uh, foil vampirella book. I thought that was really cool. So yeah, a lot of this stuff here is me picking out stuff I wanted from his actual uh, for sale bins because he has you know his little shop set up. Uh, Marvel Zombies Resurrection number one. Uh, another Lee and Hugh Marvel Zombies. Love his artwork. I, oh, is this? I think it's. A, I gotta adjust the camera. No. Okay, I'm trying a new tripod. It's a little bit wobblier, but it's uh wrap around. You got it. Thank you, Jason. I might need a lot of help tonight because my head, I like it's that brain fog that I've had for two weeks. I keep forgetting things. It's really frustrating. It's like I can imagine it, I can picture it, but I just can't remember what it's called. Uh Beta Bailey, nice 12 cent issue. That's fun. Uh Jen Bartel, Black Widow. Love that. 
Uh, ten cent sad sack. That's awesome. Being able to get the ten cent books cheap is amazing. Adventure Time Season 11. I don't have a lot of these newer ones, so I was actually really happy to get that. Uh, this, I don't know what this is. Is uh, Oh, it's a local comic book shop. Okay, interesting. Thank you, Spawn69. I was a little confused on that. Uh, so this, I don't think had a regular cover. I think this was just newsprint. But it says The Case of Wasted Water. And I think it's actually, and someone told me it was a Neil Adams cover. I had it on my live stream uh, when I was on my walking channel. When I just, I did like a brief look through it. But I just like, the artwork looked gorgeous. And I think it does have a bit of value to like look how awesome this artwork is. Is ooh la la, look at the, the lady taking a bath. And uh, we got dinosaurs, so you got ladies, you got dinosaurs, and they're all swimming in shit treated water or, or shit water that's been treated. <laughs> I thought it was such a cool like Americana. I don't know what you call that. I thought that was really awesome though. Yeah, Neil has a beautiful, beautiful book. Like that was super cool and he gave it to me cheap i think like a couple bucks uh gargoyles ashcan number one love david nakayama work uh okay so this book you might see a few more copies of this in this stream uh because this is adventure time with fiona and cake number one i spent a day researching and i am 100 uh, percent convinced this is uh, fiona and cake's first appearance in comics so i um I, like all I could find was that I think in a DVD box set, there's like a one page comic with her in it that predated this. But this is the first like full comic appearance. Uh, and these are not worth anything like the new series out and no one's specking on this. You, I could buy these. I was buying ratios for like 10 bucks. These you can get for like three to five dollars. So we got number one and number three. So I'm going to pick up as many of those as I can get because I think I, mean, I haven't watched the series. Anyone watched the series yet? Is it any good? Does the series suck? Maybe I'm just wasting my money. But I'm a huge fan of Adventure Time. I like... It's like a fun gender swap version in a, a way that makes sense since uh, Fiona is fan fiction from The Ice King. So The Ice King's fan fiction where he just gender swapped everyone. It makes it fun and hilarious and awesome. Absolutely love it. Uh, we only find them when they're dead, number one. The really amazing Jenny Friesen cover. Uh, Streetside said when he first got these, he sold a couple of them for like a hundred bucks. The price came way down, and I think he gave it to me for like five bucks. <laughs> Amazing deal. Amazing book, though. I thought that was a cool cover. Uh, he just threw this in for free. It was the one where the color needed to be corrected, so it's the error version. He's like, here, you just take it. It's for you, Sean. Oh, it's this is okay. This was super sweet of Anthony. So when I got to this place, he's like, oh, Sean, I want to give you this book. He knew this was the one book that really got me upset when my basement flooded. He found another copy. So he gave me a replacement copy. How cool is that? Anthony is such a sweet guy. So that's like, that's a treasure. I thought I might have one, but I wasn't 100% sure. That's why I got upset because I might not have this one because I think this one is pretty hard to get. So I'm, I was super thrilled to get another one. That you know, that's not water damaged. <laughs> the other one I threw out because it was badly damaged. Okay, next stack, next pile. I'm gonna drink a little bit of water. Ah, oh, it's hot today too. It's kind of hard to function when it's so hot. Okay. All right, next stack. All right, I didn't lose you guys here, right? Yeah, it's very nice. Um, he also he had all these are from um when he bought that collection of the whole ton of nineteen nineties newsstands. He actually he gave me the a stack of the turtles for free. I'm like, oh, those are cool. How much you want? He's like, if you want them, I'll give you one of each for free. So he ended up giving me a, a stack of like eight uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures. These actually have quite a bit of value, five ten bucks, I think. But with the newsstand, I think they're worth even more. So that was super sweet of him too. He just he giving me gifts. I'm going there to spend money and he's giving me gifts. It's amazing. And these are all really cool. And these ones you barely ever see. I don't see these in dollar bins. I rarely see them for sale for more than that. I think, what year are these? 90, not sure of the year, but I think the print runs on these higher numbers are pretty low. Uh, oh, and then this stack was cool too. Um, I know it's going to be like a hundred tomorrow. Ugh. So he had uh, some Golden Age romance books. I'm like, oh, Anthony, you know, that's what I want. He's like, yeah, that's why I held them for you. He gave them to me. <laughs> Look at she's looking cute in her swimsuit, taking a dive into the ocean. It's, it's so, uh, I love the old school romance because it's, it's fun, it's sweet, it's salacious, it's, it's like scandalous, it's goofy. What an awesome issue. So we have Girls Love number 64. Pretty decent shape. 
Uh, Young Romance, uh, June, July, 59. Not sure of the number, but that's awesome. And I Love You, a Charlton book. So he gave me those three for free as well. How awesome is that? You're just like, oh, yeah, these are for you. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we have a, a Peach Momoko virgin variant. Uh, Brer One, a different virgin variant. Uh, this I had never seen before. It's a, um, I forget the series, but it's a Rose Besh cover. Like, I love Rose Besh artwork. So, like, I had never seen this one before. So, when I saw it, it's a uh, limited edition cover one. I have a feeling this one must have some value because I've never seen... Oh, yeah, it's Nick's number five. Uh, I'm guessing it's like a one and 25 ratio, maybe. I just never seen it. So, when I saw it in his bins, I was like, oh, wow, I really have to get that. So, that's super awesome. Uh, then we have the ratio variant. I believe that's the ratio variant for arrow number one. I've been trying to get all the arrow issues. So, I was actually really happy to pick that up. All right, lots of really amazing stuff in that stuff. Amazing books. Okay. Uh, all right, one more handful from uh, Street Side. And then we're going to go into the other stuff that I bought. I bought so much stuff in the last uh, uh, month or so. I even I was I, I took a month off and then I went crazy for a couple of days. And I feel like I spent way too much money for the few days I actually bought stuff. <laughs> I got to stop buying just to buy and uh, like actually try to sell some stuff and pay for everything. Uh, die number one, I think this is the ratio variant. So this one's actually quite a expensive or a harder to get version. Uh, this was super, super dope. So he had Grendel number one. I believe this is the first appearance of the female Grendel. So that's actually was on my want list. Um, and so I was just like, I was thrilled to see that. And then he had a second copy. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna grab both of these because I think it's awesome. But then he had a newsstand version as well. So he was, uh, hey Thomas, he gave these to me for like $3 each or something like crazy. Uh, no, I think that one was maybe like 10 and then like three each. I know, crazy awesome price. Uh, I don't know what series this is. All I know is that this cover is absolutely stunning. I just love the way it's painted. She looks super cute. I love all the details and design. Not sure what series it is. So I got to take a look at it. Uh, the Neighbors from Boom Studio. So it's a one per store, super rare variant. That is super cool. I love stuff like that. The thing is, I know Anthony kind of loves stuff like that too. So he ends up accumulating. So he probably ended up accumulating a lot of this into the, the spec room. Uh, Silk number one, Peach Moko cover. Awesome comic. Uh, Star Wars High Republic number 11, uh, Peach Moko variant. Love that. That's one of my favorite covers from that year. Uh, Star Wars High Republic number six, Peach Moko cover. Love that. Uh, uh, Souza, Micah. Red Sonya cover, awesome cover. Love that one. Oh, More Lady Mechanica. I didn't realize that I had a couple more. So this is number one. Uh, I don't remember if that's... That might be the first print. Maybe the second print. I forget. Uh, Lady Mechanica number zero. Now, all of these are kind of hard to get and are all like 10 to $30, I believe. Uh, this really, really beautiful Peach Momoko cover. I know that one's pretty hard to get. Uh, another awesome virgin peach from Elko. like i was so thrilled that he had so much of this kind of stuff because a lot of this stuff would have cost me a lot more if i bought it on ebay uh this really adorable rian gonzalez book love that i love her artwork i just love how colorful and fun it is it's uh i guess a power ranger book that is awesome uh merca and Delfo, one per store virgin variant i'm not sure what series that is but maybe mystic i'm thinking but that is awesome uh first i think that's the first appearance of the war on uh, ariella that is super cool i really like the tv series so it was fun to pick that up uh, Lee and Hyuk, I forget the series, but it's an awesome virgin variant. Love Lee and Hyuk. Uh, awesome, um, Something's Killing the Children, Peach Momoko virgin variant. Uh, so yeah, lots of awesome, awesome stuff. Let's see, do you think 90s guys would come harder to get? Uh, no, so 90s books, this is what happened, okay? In the 1930s into the early 1940s, comic books were just consumed. They made millions of each book. They were consumed like a cup of coffee. Uh, oh, good night, Matt. Sleep well. Um, so books, and then in the mid '40s during World War II, they recycled and you know just destroyed the majority of comics books and other paper goods for the war effort. So a lot of that was just destroyed to the point where there's very little left. Then in the um, the '50s, uh, stuff was kept a little bit more because there wasn't any like paper drives, but they were still consumed. So most books were damaged or thrown out or you know consumed, not kept. By the 60s, though, people started, there started being little, like, collectible stores. People started collecting them a little bit. They started becoming a little bit of nostalgia. So the tenure, so basically my theory is that the, the, the 8 to 12-year-olds that bought comics in 1940, 
right? When they were 25, 30, that's when people start really buying their childhood. That would have been 15 years later. So that's like 55, 60. So though that first wave of, of comic fans in the, the, the 40s into the early 50s, into the 60s when they grew up and were 25, 30, started buying them as collectibles. Whereas there wasn't anyone in the original in the 30s and 40s that were doing that because there wasn't comics really before that, just newspaper comics. So by the end of the 60s, um, a lot of comics still got thrown away. Comedy was doing really well for everyone, so it wasn't like people were holding on to stuff. Kids moved out or went to, into the military. Parents threw out the stuff because they were just like, all right, it's time to get rid of the childhood stuff. And so comics up through the 60s, they were disposed of. They weren't kept. You get into the 70s, and people there were started being more people uh, keeping them in 1970s when they started making bags and boards, but bags and boards were super expensive back then. So some people were preserving books in the 70s, but there there weren't books preserved really. Even all the books, like the Mile High collection was on a floor in a basement stacked really high in stacks of like 50 or 100 and like hundreds of stacks. No protection. They just that was in Colorado. So the temperature and the humidity, everything was perfect. Um, uh, well... But but not to the point where you have a huge supply of high grade uh, Silver Age marvels. But they were holding on to them a lot more than they were Golden Age because Golden Age it was none. But you know, like I said, by the '60s there were adult collectors of comics because they had grown up with comics in the the '40s and '50s. So by the '80s, by the '80s, uh, comics were pretty much booming. So when I started buying comics in '86. Uh, there was an inkling that comics were of value. So I, you know, throughout the 80s till the late 80s, uh, yeah, these, so this is the beginning. I just I showed a short box. Uh, I have six or seven long boxes I'm putting into the shop. So um, today I'm only showing the 150 and then it, um, um, no, it's not, it's not, well, it, it's supply and demand. But remember, books were printed in the millions in the 40s because they were, there wasn't video games. There wasn't, uh, television was a really rare thing. Uh, you know, a couple shows at night. If you're lucky enough to have a TV, you had the radio. Um, so kids bought comics because comics was their form of entertainment, right? Or, or you went outside and you played with a, a ball and a stick. So what I'm saying is by the 80s, uh, what happened was my parents' generation, they were all bummed out because comics started jumping high in value and they all had stories of their stuff being thrown out, right? Oh, my mom threw them out. My dad threw them out. Uh, I don't have that. I used to have Amazing Fantasy 15. I used to have this. I used to have that. It was thrown out. So my generation was instilled. You got to keep all your stuff mint and you got to keep it because it gets thrown out and it loses value. I mean, it gains so much value. So by the late 80s and the 90s, they started overproducing and printing tons of collectibles that people were hoarding, thinking they'd be rich because all the stuff that our parents had became super valuable. So stuff from like the late 80s into the mid 90s overproduced and everything kept mint. So there's millions of copies of like Spawn 1 and X-Men 1 and all the things that are super high grade that you can get easily. That's never going to be worth anything because there's too much of it. But you know what happened, right? You had you had comics, you had trading cards overproduced, and you had things like Beanie Babies overproduced. So there's a lot of things that are overproduced, and they crash in value. For the longest time, I heard comic books are worthless. They're Beanie Babies. I heard Beanie Babies are worthless. They're Beanie Babies. I heard trading cards are worthless. They're Beanie Babies. So by the late 90s, that generation, though the early kids being born by the late 90s, all their parents that were like in their early 20s were like, oh, shit's worthless. Get rid of it. So the late 90s into the early 2000s, a lot of that stuff is super valuable now. Pokemon cards. There's Pokemon cards worth $100,000, $300,000 for a Pokemon card. Whereas no comics in the 90s will ever be worth more than a few thousand. That's how crazy it is. It's because Pokemon was thrown out and destroyed. Comics were hoarded. Hey, Donald. Hey, Axius. Yeah, Je uh, no, that's not Jenny Friesen. This is uh, Peach Momoko right here. Peach Momoko. That's her signature right there. It's, this is 100% Peach Moko. Um, <laughs> no, no I, I would spec on books if it's, uh, if it's a, like a, either a really high key issue or a really awesome book that no one appreciates yet. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, the, the 200 boxes, what Anthony does is he buys and sells boatloads of comics he literally will tell me he buys he buys collections like i buy individual books there'll be weeks where he'll buy five collections of 40 bucks he buys so many books 
that um, he gets overwhelmed. So what he does is he he bulk sells a lot of long boxes for fifty dollars a box. He cl clears them out. So he clears out a lot of the bulk. He cherry picks the really high end stuff. You know the stuff that uh, he can get quick hundred bucks, two hundred, three hundred dollars. He puts that out for sale. He pulls out the stuff that's easy for him to sell. What happened was he had a room where he would put this kind of stuff. Stuff that's like speculation or kind of hard to sell or kind of rare and people don't know, know about it. So he'll, it's a lot of this kind of stuff or spec books like this, like First Appearance of War, Warrior Nun. So it's it's not junk. I What I did was I, I was thinking, let me, you know, I went there. I wasn't 100% sure I wanted to buy it yet. I also, I couldn't come up with 20 grand right off the bat. So I worked out with Anthony. He said I could, we made a deal where I went through a box. I'm like, you know, Anthony, let me fill up. Let me, I basically said I had $2,000 to spend. We agreed on seven boxes, long boxes for 2000 We ended up doing six long boxes and then a short box, which was this, some of this stuff that I actually grabbed from his regular sale boxes. And um, so I went through, I went through about 20 something boxes and I pulled out six or seven that I thought was worth selling in the shop or I want them for myself. And then there's like 15 boxes or so that were the ones that I didn't want this time. So basically, I would have got extra 15 boxes for that 2000 if that makes sense. Appreciate that, Jason. So it's it's not cherry picked. It's more like it's curated into the oddity. So, you know, there's a lot of really cool. Uh, let, let me actually um, I actually pulled out another box from him. Let me go grab that. I have another box that was Keepers from Tay. I said everyone in the 80s kept them in absolute mint condition. It's only if you have a weird, like, Spawn number one newsstand, I think that has a chance to be a $100,000 book one time. That's, well, that's a that's really good that you bought Apple stock in the 80s. You probably made tens of thousands of dollars or millions. <laughs> Apple stock was not really worth that much. Uh, okay, I have a bunch of packages open, but I think I want to go through one more box of street side stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, I had one more short box I actually put together today while I was priced. I priced out two long boxes, and then I kept another short box. So this short box is all the stuff that I kept out of the collection. So just to give you more of an idea of what is in there. And I don't know. I've only gone through about 20 of the boxes. 20, 22 boxes. Um, and I should have mined Bitcoin when it was... Uh, or, or bought Bitcoin when I could get 40000 for like 20 bucks. <laughs> right? It's not... Uh, it's not... It's just if you could predict the future, you could have just won the lottery too. Uh, I always say you got to collect the things that are super, well, especially with kids stuff, you got to collect the stuff the kids want that the adults are ignoring, right? Because that's the stuff that ends up, because nostalgia really affects value. When you're like eight and the coolest thing ever is a Charizard Pokemon card, when you're like 80, you're going to want that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not, when you, I'm saying is when you're an 80 year old, that'll still be something that's worth a lot to you. That'll still be a thing that seems really awesome. That's like, if for other kids, they'll think it'll be stupid because it'll seem like an old person thing. Uh, well, I have a feeling silver and gold, well, not gold, gold is rare, no matter what. But silver and copper is going to become more supplied as people grow out and die out of their collections. I honestly, I kind of like modern books that are, um, but not... Not that, like, you know, Adventure Time. I just showed you, Adventure Time, Steven Universe. I like that kind of stuff, because that's the kind of stuff that the, you know, 15-year-olds are going to be buying in 10 years, when they're 25. They're not going to be buying silver. People buy who like silver or grew up with silver will be dead. Or really old. <laughs> right? Uh, it's just like, it has to be, uh, nostalgia is really what sets, uh, there's a reason why, you know, some, you know, unopened base set Pokemon is what, 200, or like 50, 60,000 uh, uh a first edition is 250,000 Pokemon cards. Like, I, it blows me your mind that a way that you could buy a house or a box of Pokemon cards. Well, sp speculation drives short-term value. Nostalgia drives long-term value. 
Long-term value is from nostalgia, speculation is from short-term, right? Like in 10 years, all the blips from the Eternals and like Shang-Chi will be meaningless. But the Miles Morales stuff, all the kids that are seeing the cartoon right now that absolutely love it, they'll be paying for that. So no, I, I can see Miles Morales having a lot of nostalgic value. Whereas, you know, you know the Eternals and uh, whatever new show is coming this week, that just, that's only if the show really appeals to a younger audience today. Right, that will have a lot of value in the future. Okay, so this is all stuff that I bought. I, I picked out of the boxes that I repicked for myself today. So we, these aren't super expensive, but I think these are super cool. So there's a whole stack of these Virgin variants. I think these are only like five. Like I put a couple of each of these in my shop at like five or six bucks a piece. But still, I paid about $1.20. So it should be a good profit margin. And I get to add a whole bunch to my collection. So I decided I had to keep a set of those because these are really just beautiful i forget the artist it's not someone i normally collect man thing it's amazing uh west coast avengers number 10 this is the first appearance of someone i think it's like a a 15 book um i love that i was going to sell it then i saw it was a rare book and then i loved the artwork so i decided to keep it he had a lot of this kind of stuff in that room too a lot of stuff that he had that were like spec books first appearances of people uh this is a verotica book by danzing that's quite a rare book uh scotty young lando book love that um, Leela, so you, I forget her name, but I like her artwork. So we have Obi-Wan number one, uh, the dreaming number one, beautiful, uh, uh, Jay Lee cover. Love his artwork. Uh, fear and loathing in Vegas. I think this is like a 20 or $30 book. Uh, this one I couldn't find. It's the stone number one special edition and foil. And, uh, I just, I don't know what, uh, it's worth. Um, and I couldn't figure out, so I decided just to keep it. A uh, Mark Brooks Avengers 682. I know there's a secret variant. I don't know which one is which, so I just decided to keep it. Uh, crossover one again, more spec books. A uh, Batman 17, really awesome cover, or Batwoman 17. A uh, Deadpool one. Uh, it's like a three dollar book, but I love it because um, Firestar is on the cover, and I was a big fan of hers back in the 80s. Uh, more of this artist. I am Groot. Yeah, the Lando is super cute. Yeah, a lot of the stuff I, I didn't see either, which is amazing to me. Uh, yeah, Scotty Young is pretty popular. They sell well, and some of them actually go up to quite a bit of value. I have a bunch that I thought were just 3 or $4 books. I looked up like a couple months ago and realized they're 30 to $50 books now. So Young Young really has a good following, and I don't think the print runs are that high on them. Maybe 5,000 copies. Uh, Firepower, number one, spec book. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I absolutely love the anime. I didn't play the game. Love the anime. So I was like, I gotta keep that book. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. I don't know if these have any value, but I just, I love the way they look. I just think they're super dope. We got a, you know, Punisher Thanos. So I thought I wanted to add those to the collection. Oh, we got a duplicate. I gotta double check the values on that. I'll sell a duplicate if it's, uh, oh, a couple of, okay. I'll, I'm gonna sell the duplicates. I think this is a ratio variant. Justice League number one. So that's super fun. Uh, really cool. Um, yeah, the early ones are definitely expensive because they probably, the first Scotty Youngs, they probably only did like 2,500 copies or something like that, like a really low print run. The newer ones are a lot more expensive. Um, Suspiria number one, like that's a really cool um, Dario Argento movie. I really like it. It's a really creepy, fun horror movie. So I thought it'd be cool to get the comic. Uh, Supernatural's number two. I think this series actually has a little bit of value now, like 20 bucks a piece. So I grabbed number one and number two. Uh, Shotgun Mary, number one. Again, I really like the um, Warrior Nun series on there. Oh, and then these Verotica books, these are quite expensive, I think. Satanica, number, I'm not sure the number, but it's also a Danzy written. So I grabbed all those. Okay. See what we got. Oh yeah, we got a whole bunch of these. I think it's like a horror anthology. It's a little bit uh, risque, uh, but these, if you see them, I'm pretty sure if someone can look them up. I'm pretty sure these are like ten to thirty dollar books. Um, uh, these were printed in the late '90s, I believe, and that's a Frazetta cover. So it's, I don't know if it's a fresh one or a reprint. A uh, Shotgun Mary. So again, that's for the Warrior Nun with a little soundtrack. That's fun. More of these Veronica issues. Uh, something is killing the children. I don't know the number, but it's a fun virgin variant. Yeah, these. I'm pretty sure all these Danzig books are really expensive. Not really, not, not hundreds, but probably like ten to thirty each. Uh, Supernatural's number three and number four. So he had a full set of those. Really happy to see those. Uh, 
it's a Vampirella book. I'm not sure which book it is. It's a Virgin Mary, and it's triple signed. No certificate or anything, but I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, I'm sure they were um, kept out of... Uh... Oh, you had a Suspiria. That's cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were, weren't uh, easy access for the kids. <laughs> uh, Batman Incorporated, nice Dark 2 cover. Uh, Venom first, number one, awesome Lee and Hugh cover. Absolutely love that. Oh, a second one of these, I, I'll probably pull out the one and sell it. Uh, he had a whole bunch of Kabuki books. I love um, David Mack artwork, so I was actually really happy to see a whole bunch of these. So we have Kabuki 2. Uh, I think this is the original series, so Kabuki 3. Number 2. Someone look this up. I think the original Kabuki series might have some value to it. Uh, number 6. Uh, ROM 75. I realized I didn't have this one. I picked up a copy of this for Jason maybe a month ago, and I was like, oh, I need one. So I actually got another one. Okay, good night, Jason. Sleep well. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it's uh, Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> not sure. Not sure. Um, I, this is really fun. Uh, Danger Girl Special number three, Arthur Adams cover. Absolutely love that one. Uh, the Demon number four, a cool Bronze Age book. Uh, Immortal Red Sonia number one, beautiful cover. Uh, David Nakayama, Immortal Red Sonia number four. Love that. Uh, Gravity Falls. This is, again, if I was going to spec on comics, this is the kind of stuff I would buy. You know why? Because Gravity Falls was a really strong cult classic uh, cartoon. And so I know in like 10 years or so, maybe f even five years, because it's old enough now that the people that grew up with this that really absolutely love it, they'll they'll want this kind of stuff. So that's the kind of thing I love to spec on. Uh, Junior Jackalope, number one, a really fun 1970, no, 1982 um, super underground book. Uh, nice House on the Lake, number one. Again, he had a lot of spec books like this. So th these are only worth like four bucks. I'm going to put those away. Yeah, the Demon number four is actually a really nice looking copy. It's probably like a fine plus the very fine. Like quite high grade, if you ask me. Well, maybe. Let's see. And no, it does have a little bit of a, a crunchy crease on the bottom there. A little bit of wear. And a little bit of a crease right here. It's probably like a fine copy. It's still pretty nice, though. Maybe very fine minus. I think probably more like a fine. Yeah, the Simpsons, too. Simpsons are, are start. The books are starting to gain kind of traction. I think Simpsons, the early Simpsons books, are starting to go up in value, even though they're pretty common. Um. Okay, wait. I need a drink of water. You got a two-minute music video ad? That's a little bit too long. I thought it'd be like a skippable 30 second. Well, I hope you enjoyed the music video. <laughs> That's too long. Two minutes. What? Um, who was it? Was it uh, Man in Black that got the two minutes? Man in Black, I appreciate you watching the video for two minutes. Yeah, six, five or six sounds about right. Right in that like fine, fine plus area. Uh, okay, we got Invincible 1, the gold foil. I think that one has a bit of value. Uh, nice House on the Lake, number one. The second print, I believe. Uh, Jenny Zero, number one. This one doesn't really have much value, but it just looks super cool. Ah, look at this. So this is one of the bigger ones, I think. The um, the Goon, number one. The Exploding Albatross version. I think this is not mint or anything. It has some spine ticks. It's probably like a mid-grade copy. I still think this is probably a $50 to $100 book. I was really thrilled to see that. He also had the Goon, number one. The uh, Dark Horse series. That one's probably like a $20, $30 book. Really happy to see those. Those were ones on my... Uh, uh, oh, Black Phoenix. I'm sorry. I mixed you up. I mixed you up with Men in Black who's in here all the time. Okay. Where... Uh, so, um... Oh, thank, thank you, Ross. Uh, it, it, which one is on the hot list? The Goon is on the hot list? That's crazy. Yeah, I love the Goon. The Goon is great. Uh, Avengers 39, awesome lean here cover... Uh, the Goon, I'm not sure what that is, but it's a cool, like, uh, semi or minimum trade version. Thought that was super cool. Uh, Geryon, book one, some weird indie, but it looked like it was a New York Comic Con exclusive, so I decided to keep that. More Kabuki. I do love the, uh, the Kabuki stuff, so I do, you know, I want to complete set all these. Uh, number three, Masks of the No. Number two, uh, Images. Uh, this is the trade paperback one. Uh, okay, Steven Universe number one. Uh, oh, no, I guess it's and the Crystal Gem. So it's the miniseries. So yeah, that 
you know, that's the kind of stuff I want to hold on to. Hey, Shemleg. Yeah, the Goon Book is a ghost. It's a rare book. That's why I, um, I was thrilled to see one for so cheap. Oh, thank you. I, I, I've been kind of out of it all week, so I've been dying to do a nice comic video because I love doing these. I have so much... Like, if I'm depressed, I want to do a comic haul video because I have a lot of... Um, just joy. Just joy. I have so much joy when I'm doing the comic videos. Uh, Seeding Universe and the Crystal Gems, number one. So those are super cool. That's the kind of stuff I think a while will have value because I think that's the stuff that the kids that grew up with it that are now probably in their mid-teens, they'll end up wanting to buy that. Uh, we got Red Room number one. The um, I don't know which printing, but it's the uh, sketch variant. That one's awesome. Love that. Uh, the Isle of Dr. Moreau, number one. Uh, Inhuman 14, the Howard the Duck. Looks sort of like a Banksy. Uh, House of Slaughter, number one. This one is cool because it's signed by um, James Tynion. And it's got the uh, the Midtown certificate. So that's really cool. And then we have Savage Dragon 252. Absolutely love that cover. The uh, Peanuts homage. Um, yeah, now free books are awesome. Are awesome uncontrollable MK. Yeah, I'm gonna go through a lot of books tonight. I have a lot of boxes to open. But I also I like that's kind of why I like to buy collections and to sell off stuff I don't want to get as close to even as possible. So that I could definitely uh I keep all the books for free if I can. Alright, I hope I didn't if I miss any of your questions or anything, you guys can uh state it again. Uh Jay Lee, Virgin Variant, not sure what that was, but I thought that was a cool cover. Uh, not a hundred percent sure what series that is, but that's a really fun virgin variant. Uh, Kabuki number three, Kabuki dreams. Uh, I think it's just a short story. Uh, Isla number, uh, I'm not sure the number, but it's double signed. I thought that was super cool. Uh, Prince Valiant, a nice silver age book. Birthright number one, second printing. Uh, Monkey Prince number one. Not sure what this book is, but I thought it looked really cool. Yeah. The Savage Dragon one is super cute. Love that one. I could put it back on the screen for a second. Ah, uh, you just it's all about looking and looking and looking and 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 making offers and uh being friendly and asking a lot. If you ask often, eventually you'll find some collections. Yeah, Reef, that's awesome. That's exactly how you want to do it. Because that's how you get as many comics as you can afford, because you can keep reusing the same money. Uh, Jenny Friesen, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, it's a thicker trade, so that's super cool. We got Jughead, The Hunger, number one. Awesome book. Uh, Carmen, number one, kind of a spec book. Uh, Rags, number two. I think this series actually has quite a bit of value. Uh, Rags, number two, the foil variant. Uh, Carbon Gray. I'm not sure what this was, but I really like the cover on that. Number one, or number three and number two. Uh, four kids walk into a bank. This was a limited to 250 copies. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, Klaus number one, awesome cover. Absolutely love that one. Uh, Reborn issue one, again, kind of a spec book. He had a lot of spec books. I love Jenny Friesen too. I pick up everything. Monkey Birds is from uh, DC. Okay, super cool. Uh, oh, all right, we're going to get into, um, he's got a lot of, or I found a whole stack like about that big of uh, 70s underground books. So I'm going to have to try to censor those as we get through them. Uh, for Eternity by Rod Espinosa. I actually really like the Rod Espinosa books I've read in the past. So I actually, um, I think I'm going to enjoy reading that. I really like his uh, manga stuff. Uh, Mega Man, the Master Mix number one. A really thick issue. I thought it looked cool. Uh, okay, and then the Underground books. I think these have quite a bit of value. Uh, I haven't seen the new... Oh, yeah, the new Starfire where she has... Is it the one that came out a couple months ago that's um, got the uh, tattoos on her? That one is amazing. I love that one. Uh, okay, we have Snarf number three. It says it's a Will Eisner book. That's actually really awesome because it's like an underground Will Eisner book. So it's kind of like Will Eisner, but a little bit more risque. Uh, Chambers of Darkness number five. A little bit lower grade with the corners chipped off, but I still thought that was super cool. We got, oh, got to censor it. Cheech Wizard. All right, I'm going to have to censor these. Uh, Cheech Wizard. These go for, I think, like five to ten bucks a piece. Number two. And uh, no, that's... Number two, and this is number one, I think. Uh, Insect Fear, number two. That one is super cool. I've never seen that one before. Uh, Horror in the Dark. That's a 80s one. 
Brain Fantasy, that's a really cool looking 1970s. Oh, that's an early 1970s. That's an early underground book. Uh, oh, it's, it's, uh, oh, I'm sure it's super low. Any of the, uh, the indie stuff from the seventies is super low. I love collecting it. Like this artwork is gorgeous in here. I got to just double check. I'm not showing any nudity, but yeah, I love anytime I can get cool old, um, indie stuff like that for super cheap. I am thrilled. Uh, this one I can't show you. It's very risque, but it's gay heartthrobs. Very risque inside. 1969, so that's even a Silver Age indie. Uh, Hot Crackers. That one is super dope. Hot Crackers. And uh, one more Cheech Wizard. I would not be surprised. I really, I don't really sell my um, really underground books that often just because of how rare it is to find them. So, yeah, I, I should double check because you're right. There could be signatures, especially if it's a small print run where someone would have been happy to, uh, you know, sign a few. Yeah, nothing. I don't see any of those few, but yeah, these are awesome. I love the underground stuff. Underground stuff is awesome. You never know what else you'll find inside, too, when you open up. Yeah, Silver Age uh, gay comic. That's kind of awesome, actually. That's something that you probably would not see that often. Uh, oh, is this a duplicate? All right, I might have one duplicate on the Cheech Wizard. I know these go for probably about 10 bucks a piece, so that's cool. Hey, Ralph. Uh, okay, uh, I can't really show this one because he's got kind of something going on in front of him. <laughs> uh, these are kind of risque. Power Comics, number one, 75 cents, so that's probably late 70s. Uh, Fantagore, number three. Really uh, gory-looking horror book. Oh, that reef, that is awesome. Uh, bizarre something number three. I don't know what's going on with that giant uh, lightning bug. <laughs> Dope comics number four. Uh, okay, this is a really risque looking Robert Crumb book. Uh, animal bite. I don't know the number on that one, but again, very underground. Uh, I don't think there's anything risque on this except for the name, Flesh Gordon, uh, Moon Child, Easy Wolf. Man, this was such a great collection of underground books, though. A lot of these are probably, oh, uh, 10 to $40 a piece, I would say. Maybe even higher. Some of these might be up to 100 bucks. Uh, Left Field Funnies. That one is super cool. Left field funnies. Uh, Mad and Pat, number one. That looks neat. Oh, wow. Secret Wars one side? That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's fun, too, because you don't see it, and it's rare, and it's hard, and it's like... Marvel, I see everywhere. Marvel's easy to find. We got a Girl Fight comic. 50 cents, so that's probably, like, early 70s. Uh, we got um, uh, Tales of Sex and Death. Can't really show that. Looks pretty cool though. And we got a uh, Fantagore or something. So yeah, I'm really hoping. I only went through 10% of his books. I'm hoping that there's another stack of 20 every like like you know a few hundred total. I hope there's two two or three hundred extra underground books mixed within the collection as I go through it. That would be awesome. Okay, so that was box number two. That's all the stuff I pulled out today from the uh, the collection. I think it's actually pretty awesome stuff. I, honestly, a lot of these, the, especially the underground stuff, a lot of those books I've never seen either. So it's really fun. That's, I mean, if you notice, a lot of the stuff I'm grabbing for myself is weird stuff that you might have never seen before because it's stuff that I don't own. It's stuff I haven't seen before. Yeah, Axios, I was really into the, uh, that kind of stuff too, like 20 years ago. I was grabbing a lot of Robert Crumb stuff. They are really low print runs. You're probably talking... Oh, I don't know. A thousand or less of each of them. A thousand or less, maybe a lot less than that. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, what do you got? I have a bunch of Adventure Time books. I have some... They are ghosts. That's why I buy them on site every time, even if I think I have it already. Just uh, knowing how rare they are. So I have a bunch of Adventure Time books. I have some rare... Uh, actually, no, let's do a, uh, a semi-grail. You guys want to see a box of grail books? Okay, so I have... This is my last hurrah for a while of uh, big books. So this box right here, 
This is a box I spent $1,772 on. This is from selling my Funko Pop. So this is more of my Funko Pop money. This is what I put in the last, um, uh, you know, the last big purchase I made from that money. So let's start. We got some big boy books here. This one is uh, was on my top 10 want list, I believe. We got X-Men number 50. Let's do this. So we have an 8-0... X-Men 50. Absolutely love this cover. Let me just get the stand. Okay. Absolutely love that cover. That was really high on my want list. Uh, oh, I got to... Okay, right there. Yeah, regular show books. Again, those are ones I would hold on to or invest in because I have a feeling those will be worth something. I mean, those early um, underground books are kind of fun to collect because they're just so over the top. Uh, so this one is five twenty six. The price is really like half of what it was a year ago. Amazing book. I thought I wouldn't get it because it went and this kind of condition went up to over a thousand bucks. And I just like I thought it was out of my price range. So when I was able to get it, you know, I I, I was like, holy crap! I had to purchase it. Yeah, it's such a beautiful cover. Like I would go higher, but five hundred bucks felt like like uh six o was the only like fifty dollars less so it's like an eight o felt like a really high grade without paying too crazy of a high grade price beautiful book okay this next one was uh high on my want list too this one was only 381 dollars this was a steal we got marvel premiere number 15 in a nine o first appearance of iron fist uh, i really want to knock out all my bronze and silver keys so i was thrilled to get that Super duper cheap. This book probably was up to like 800 to 1,000 last year. Uh, you could get a little bit higher for like triple the price. I felt like this was the sweet spot. 9-0. Beautiful uh, condition. But, you know, not so perfect. I have to spend thousands on it. Less than $400. $381. Felt like a steal on that. So that was, this one was 526. This one is 381. Cannot believe it. Oh, I got all these from... Um, CollectorComics.com. It was uh, um, Comic Book Investment. David, his YouTube channel. This is from his uh, quarterly auction. So I decided to buy a bunch. Okay, next big book I got. I bought three big books, and then we'll get a bunch of cheaper books. But the next big book I bought was on my want list as well. And, um, you know, I've wanted it for a long time. When it went up to like $1,000 in this grade, I thought I was never going to have one. Seeing it for less than $400 felt like a steal. Uh, and then the last one I got was a Marvel Special Edition 15 9 0. This one was uh, $418. So $400, bucks, 9 0. Again, I could have got like a 9 4 for almost double. 9 0 felt like the sweet spot where it felt like a high grade copy, but I'm paying a cheap price. So look at that. I knocked out three of my really high, but not the most expensive ones. Uh, no, these are for my PC, these are my personal ones. So I, I need to build a wall of comics for uh, my own PC. <laughs> For my videos. <laughs> but a 90, 90, 80, 500, uh, around 400. Years. Like, holy crap. I felt like those are such amazing deals. Okay, this next book I got was... Uh, what did I pay for this one? I'm trying to figure out my... Uh, this one was $76. Yeah, 90 is like a... It's almost perfect. Like, it maybe has like a little mark on the... It has. It's going to have the smallest... One or two small flaws that keeps it from going higher. So it's going to look really beautiful. Uh, white pages, off-white pages, off-white pages. Or off-white to white. So that one looks white. That one looks white. That one doesn't look too bad. Just slightly tanned. Uh, okay, so this is super cool. $76. This is Edge of Spider-Verse number one. This is one of those uh, Bryce comics. Um, he, you know, he did this in a mystery box. His mystery boxes were $250. So these were selling for $150 to $200 right out of the bat. Uh, this is number 85 out of 250. Uh, really beautiful Mercandelfo cover. I absolutely love her artwork. I love this cover. So $76 felt like a steal. Uh, oh, double signed Daredevil 1. That is awesome. So I was really happy to get that one for a really good price. Like I felt overall I was getting really good prices. Uh, okay, this next one I paid up on. I feel like I paid $162. I couldn't figure out the value. But when I was looking at it, it looked like some of them went really, like they used to go for a lot more. So 162 felt high, but I don't know. I couldn't figure out the value. So it's a 9-8 Department of Truth number one, the Peach Momoko sketch cover. Uh, so this is probably one of the rarest number ones for Department of Truth. It's an awesome peach cover, 9-8. I decided, you know, I'm just going to bid whatever it takes to win that one. <coughs> uh, 
Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I got the Dallas Spider. I got the uh, nine eight and a nine nine of the trade, but not the um. The ver I'm happy. The nine nine goes for like five hundred bucks. So I think I got really good value out of the mystery box, honestly. Like, I kind of regretted not buying that mystery box. So I was thrilled that I was able to pick up one of the uh, variants for so cheap. Uh, okay, this is only a 9.6, but still not a... De you know, it's a decent grade. Demon War, Shield of Justice, number one. Another beautiful Peach Momoko cover. Uh, this one was Demon Wars... $16. Six, one, six, $16. Less than the price to get it graded. So I was like, you know what? I just bid it because it was a peach cover. I didn't have it, and it was cheap. Yeah, that's definitely... That has really high potential. That could be a $1,000 book one day if the Department of Truth becomes a really fun show or something like that. So that's, like, that's definitely the kind of book that's worth holding on. Like, that's the kind of thing I would like to... If I was going to invest in more, I'd buy a couple of those. Right? That's the kind of thing I would like to invest in. Or the Bryce... Like, that for 76, I think this is a good investment because I think Miles and Spider-Gwen uh, will have long-term value as well. Uh, this one was I bought because it was cheap, but it's a fun Nathan Zerdy cover. I just thought it was a really fun-looking... Uh... Yeah, exactly. It was less than the cost to get it graded. Uh, let's see. Dark Crisis. This one was 27 bucks. I do like Nathan Zerdy books a lot, so I was like, yeah, why not? Less than the cost to grade it. And then the last book I got in this batch was just a really, really beautiful Dawn Matigue uh, Vampirella book. I love Dawn Matigue books. I try to collect every one I can get. Oh, Dawn, that's super awesome. It's crazy how high the value has gone up on those Marvel collector cards. I used to have a hard time selling them out of quarter, so I just started holding on to them. So I have like thousands of them just put the, away to the side. I should start trying to sell some of them since they've gained so much value. Uh, let's see, Vampirella. Um, I don't, I don't see. Oh, I forgot. I, this one was under. I don't know how much I paid. I forgot to write it down, but I think it was under forty bucks. I think it was like thirty eight or something like that. Absolutely love Dawn Matigue artwork. I think she just does. It's hand drawn, so you see the texture of the paint and pencils. I like that. I like it. There's so many things today that are digital. That's nice. Like Dawn Matigue, uh, Peach Moko. I like seeing ink and paint on paper. I like the way it looks. I think it's just gorgeous to see actual art. Especially when we're going to see so much more AI stuff. It's going to be... Uh, uh... Yeah, exactly. You just, like The prices are so good right now. I don't think you'll regret it. Like, Oh, hey, Thomas. Uh, the only way you're going to lose value on the big books that have dropped so much now is if, like, some major World War Three starts or something like that. And at that point, you, you'll just be happy that you can burn it for firewood, I guess. <laughs> oh, I definitely, I always have fun. I wish I could buy comics every day. Expensive books, cheap books, whatever it is. Buying comics on a daily basis just gives me so much fun. Uh, okay. Thomas, I gotta figure out um, our, our our next trade sometime soon. There's something that's getting really high on my want list to do because I want to get all those cool Ziggy things you have. Uh, okay, what are we gonna do next? Oh, okay. You know what I got? I got um, I got one of my top Grails. It's an item I wanted for years that I didn't think I was going. I've actually I asked Thomas to try to track me down one at one point. And I, I found it with someone listing it. Uh, Punisher right now is a good buy. I think his prices are depressed. But I think a lot of prices are depressed. I think it's a good time to buy any comic, honestly. Uh, okay, I got to find which box I put them. I got so many, but I have three or four giant boxes. Oh, I got two more boxes to the side that I haven't even looked at. I forgot I put to the side. One... All right, give me one second here. I'll give you uh you can look at the tiger figure as I'm trying to find this box. Yeah. All right, I found it. I found my package. So, this package is crazy. I paid cost me $127 for this package. This is a grail item. Uh, I, 
You saying, do I still have COVID money left over? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm selling off my Funko Pop collection. Um, okay, so, I uh, I paid $127 for this. This is top five grail for me at the moment. It's something I've been looking for for years. It's a thing from Brazil that I um, I found from a vendor in Italy that had it for sale. Uh, Italy cost me, uh, it was 60 euros to ship, 52 euros for the item. It cost me $127. I cannot believe it. So here we go. It's a uh, it's a Ziggy sticker album from Brazil. This thing has been high on my want list, and I um I could not believe I saw one there listed and that I could actually buy it. And what's really cool, like I want one of these as this one is full of every sticker. So we're gonna take a look through it. I want one that's unused, and I want a box of the stickers. I want a set of all the stickers, not stuck, and a set. Yeah, I got the album. I could not believe I saw it. It cost me $128. It was expensive, but it's a complete album with every single sticker. So you would have bought these packs of stickers to stick into the album. And uh, so I need to still find a box of the stickers. But getting a complete album is just absolutely amazing to me. I could not believe I was able to find this. Like this has been high on my want list for a long time. I know I, th I think I asked Thomas like a year or two ago if he saw one. This is a, like I really, really wanted one of these. And it had been a few years since I had seen one. So like when I saw it for list or for sale, I just, I was freaking out. I didn't know if I could sell it because I only found it on the Italy site. So what I did was I took the eBay number and I copied it and I pasted it into the US eBay and it came up that I could buy it. So I bought it. <laughs> it was expensive as fuck. But uh, yeah, how dope is that? Wow, that is super amazing. I can't believe I owned that. Uh, it's 1992 from Brazil. Uh, it's made, yeah, it's put, it's, it's a Panini brand, but, um, in Portuguese, Brazilian speaks Portuguese, correct? Yeah. Clean album and loose stickers. I still want those, but I'm happy to get one complete. I, like I wanted a complete album, one that was a clean album and one that was full of, uh, all the um you know the full one that i just got uh okay let's just start going through some other stuff i got so much to go through it's gonna be a long one tonight uh okay so this is a package from bryce comics every like once a week he does a whatnot show and i like to buy one or two things just to try to win the end prize uh but also you get some really awesome stuff for the price you pay so if you like slabs it's great to go to his whatnot shows Ah, uh, you're in a coma? I I'm sorry to hear that. I ho hopefully... Wait, why is this focused weird? This is really weirdly focused. All right, Thomas, awesome. Yeah, and I definitely... I got to figure out... Uh, I got. I know I have a few books for you, but I need to find more of the stuff that you want on your want list. That's actually going to be high up on my list, and especially when I'm going through um, Anthony's collection. And in fact, this week, Thomas, maybe I need to get an updated list from you so I can go next time I'm at his place, I can actually look for it. Okay, so we have I, I, I Hate Fairyland, volume two, number one. Awesome Tyler Kirkham cover. Uh, this one was 39 bucks, $39 for a 9.8 of a really fun uh, whatnot virgin variant. I thought that was super cool. I was actually really happy with that. And then the second book I got from him, this one. Now, I didn't win anything extra. I don't always win something extra, but... I feel like every once in a while I do, so it's kind of worth buying a book or two each show. And I got a Radiant Black uh, Cover B variant, and that one was 45 bucks. I do really like Radiant Black, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, all right, sweet. Thomas, it's a good time then, if you, because I know you've been so busy the last like six months to a year. So it's, uh, it'll be nice to catch up and maybe get back to some regular trading. So yeah, I felt like those are really good prices on those too. Okay, we got so much to go through today. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys like a nice five-hour stream. <laughs> Hopefully my uh, cell service doesn't die with the amount of stuff I got to show you guys. Uh, okay, I'm trying to think. Maybe I'll do one... No, I'm going to do a KRS box because I always enjoy those. Okay, so this KRS box, I paid uh, $227 for the content. 
which I think was one mystery box and then some individual purchases. Oh, Don, I'm happy that, uh, I guess this is my voice. Okay, well, Don, I hope you, uh, you recover and feel better. I want you to feel better. I want, I've, I've had a bad week myself, so it's just really nice to be here with you guys, uh, hanging out, and it's just, like, really making me feel better. I just, I broke my iPad, so I was, at, you know, I got upset about that, because I'm gonna have to spend $500 to buy another one, and, um, just a little overwhelmed, and then I couldn't stream, because the streaming thing was not working, so I just, like, ah. Okay, check that out. We have an Ivan Tao. Oh, I gotta fix this again because I have set up for the. Uh, I'm set up for the, the um, slabs. Okay, how much did I pay for this? Uh, oh, I just threw the box to the side. I only have the total. I don't know if I have the invoice. Oh, I have the invoice here. Oh, man. I wish you could call out uh, sick, but that's okay. You, you can watch later or tomorrow. You can fi fill it in. It, uh, just watching the video, any way you watch it, it is good. Okay, so I don't remember exactly what I paid because it, you know, it's not organized, but I paid 36 for one item, 17, 23, 23, 42, 105 for the mystery box, and 31. So I basically paid between 17 and 36 for all these signed books. So this beautiful Ivan Tao signed, uh, Venom book. I absolutely love his signature. I love the just the way he signs stuff. Like, that looks awesome. Beautiful book. Uh, oh, this might have been the mystery box because I know I was buying signed books, so it, it might have been for a hundred bucks. I think it was that this really awesome uh, uh, Mayhew X twenty three, a Chrissy Zulo Spider Man cover, and a Will Jack foil cover. So a hundred bucks is actually a really good price on those four. So that was the mystery box, and then everything else was uh, seventeen to um, thirty six, and some of them were lots. I think so. Like for instance, the uh, Lee and Hook. Star Wars, I think these three were actually one lot. So it might have been 36 for the three. So what we have is we have Hidden Empire 4. This is limited to 500 copies. So I thought that was really, really cool. Um, no, what not? It's so easy to, to, to spend way too much money just because there's so many great deals. But if you have the money, you're going to get better deals on whatnot usually than you can in most uh, eBay listings. Uh, Mandalorian, this was limited to 800 pieces. So really fun Lee and Hook Mandalorian, limited to 800. And then this one is limited to 500. I love buying super limited modern comics. I think that's awesome. Yeah, no, the X-23, the Mayhew 23 is gorgeous. Such a great book. Whoop. Such a great book. Here, let me pull it out again so you can look at it for a little bit longer. I do like really awesome X-23 covers when I can get them. Uh, and then we have this uh, Mayhew. This was a set, so again, somewhere between 17 and 36. So the Virgin and the Trade. And these are just more Mayhew covers. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this one was probably 36 because this was a double set. Virgin and Trade, but both are signed by Ivan Tao. So signed. Uh, very awesome. A lot of people probably do do that because you can flip a lot. Like this stuff, I paid 36 for the pair. I bet... The pair would go for a hundred bucks on eBay. You could definitely buy this stuff to flip it. If that's if you want to make money doing that, I'm sure it would be possible. Uh, this really awesome Ivan Tao. So they, I guess they just had a lot of Ivan Tao signed books this night. So that's awesome, Miles Morales book. Love Ivan Tao. So getting all these signed books were really cool. Uh, Emma Frost, another Ivan Tao again signed right there. Beautiful signature. Uh, and then I think this last one was also another lot of two. Or it might have been two individual lots. I forget. So another beautiful Ivan Tao signature up here. Uh, I love the uh, Peter Porker cover. Awesome Ivan Tao cover. And then Ivan Tao Black Cat. Signed right there. So yeah, I love buying from KRS. Whenever they have these really cool books that are signed for like under 30 bucks, I like you know buying up all the ones I don't have. I think it's such a cool little selection of stuff. Okay, KRS. That was super fun. Uh... Okay, let's do, um, hmm. okay, I think this is, oh, you know what I have? Let's do, I have one of those boxes where it's uh, one of those um, Goodwill lots from eBay that just has random stuff in it. I've actually had a lot of fun with those the last few times. So let's do that next. All right, so I got this whole box here for 30 bucks, or $30.50 shipped. 
So I think it was like a dollar a book. Uh, let's see, over here. So this is a picture of the listing. Uh, I don't see anything in here that was, I think, any super valuable. Uh, what caught my eye, though, is these four tick books and these two Ninja Turtle books. So I think those four ticks and the two Ninja Turtles, six bucks for like five dollars a piece was probably a really good you know, price. And then everything else was for free. But let's open it up and see if there's anything hiding that I missed out. All right. Uh, you guys have been signing. Did we get an ad or something? <laughs> I'm going to take a water break until I see the next comment. I don't know how the system... I think they updated the way the ads pop up on the system now. Okay, water break. Am I still here? I Hopefully I'm here. It looks like I'm here, but I can reset the, the um, app if it's acting up. Sometimes you guys are talking so fast, I can't see you, and then sometimes it just ends. I'm going to reset the app since I don't see any conversation. I'll be right back. You didn't get an ad. Okay. Ryan, have you been here the whole time? <laughs> have I been in the... Uh, so, so, I'm in conflict. I absolutely love watching automatic comic, comics. Ryan is very insightful, and, like, you learn a lot about uh, Golden Age books. His channel is definitely worth checking out, but he's in competition with me on the... Uh, comic book uh community awards we're both in the same uh haul video uh slot for five thousand plus i hate that we're competing together because <laughs> i want to vote for him <laughs> it sucks too because we're both at like that five six seven thousand range and then uh everyone else in that category is like twenty six thousand range <laughs> it's gonna be a tough one to win but yeah i appreciate ryan Okay, automatic comments. I mean, if you vote for him, it's cool. He's a great channel. I totally understand. I would vote for him myself. Okay, let's see what we got in here. Yeah, <laughs> not enemy, just friend of me. Let's go friend of me. <laughs> if you win, I won't be sad. You know, I'm not. I'm not really expecting to get the votes anyway. I. But all right, Ryan, you have to promise though. You gotta promise that Tina promote Tina to win the community award. The best community member. Because Tina deserves win. So I don't care if I win, but I want Tina to win. All right, we got Fred the Clown. So again, this is going to be a lot of kind of weird stuff. Like some of this stuff might have some value in it. Uh, something like this, you know, it's like a 2 or $3 book. Shonen Jump. I got to start paying attention to these. Because some of these are starting to gain a lot of value. If they're like the first appearance of certain characters. Uh, another Shonen Jump. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if any of these animes were first in 2000. It's 2008, so it could be like an early appearance of Bleach. Not 100% sure on that. Actually, I got to look these up afterwards because this might actually be where all the value is. <laughs> like this this could be an early uh, Naruto appearance. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, but I feel like, you know, it's going to be surprising. Some of these are going to be the ones that have a lot. Yeah, no, we're going to... The only way we won't lose the gem in is if he just doesn't promote his show. Then we have a chance, but we don't really have a chance. We don't really have a chance. So, But Tina, Tina can win. We can make Tina win. Come on. Reggie Collects better be pushing for you, Tina. <laughs> You're there every show. I absolutely love these Hong Kong books. I just think the way they're colored is just gorgeous. So, yeah. I like... To me, that's like a cool bonus. Uh, Mage Book Volume 1. That's actually kind of neat. Oh, that's really neat. That's cool. Uh, Cerebus 87. Uncle Scrooge Adventures 39. Direct Market Edition. That looks interesting. Uh, Cerebus 82. I actually think I need that one. It looks like a fun, like, Swamp Thing, Man Thing, like, mashup homage kind of thing. Uh, Uncle Scrooge 268. The Forever Maps. That's kind of cool. Uh First Knife. All right, so there's some fun uh, indie graphic novels in there. That's actually kind of a fun bonus. Uh, Johnny Quest number one. That looks like a like an ash can. Okay, let's see if there's anything else of value in here. Uh, the Amazing Adventures of the Escapist. Okay, that looks like a fun little indie book. Fred the Class. See, I didn't know that was a cool book, but if you love it, I'm sure it's awesome. I, I want to complete my service run. I'm really, like, number one, getting, like, a 6 oh for four or five grand is something I might end up doing just because I really would like to get that. 
but it's it's gonna be so hard to find one that's like in a good enough condition that i'm happy but low enough grade that it's affordable because like you know like a 9.0 is probably like ten thousand dollars or something crazy all right sleep well axios Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So Fred the Clown is actually cooler than I thought. Now, I don't think these are worth too much, but I basically bought it for the tick issues. I think they're like 4 or $5 issues. But yeah, it's fun. I love buying lots like this to get a few books that I want and then just like have this other fun stuff to play with that's for free. Karma, Tornado. Those are cool. And then Ninja Turtles 95. Uh, it's a little bit more beat up than I would like. I th That might be her first appearance, though. That might actually have a little bit of value. I could be wrong, though. Um... Asude Alien 3, that's super cool. Uh, Archie Forever 703. Oh, Sabrina. Oh, no, that's a... Um, so that's a collected version of this, but some of these hacks Sabrina covers actually have some value, so I wonder if the trade has some value. Uh, Spellbinders number two, that's super cool. Early 80s indie. Uh, really awesome inside. Love the coloring and everything about this. That is super cool. Uh, Doomsday Squad. First Adventures... Oh, we got Ripoff Press. Okay, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that's cool. We got a uh, Miami Vice number four. That's super neat. And the Tales of the Jackalope number one. That's cool. Pickle number 10. That looks like a really modern indie book. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, first Jenica. Okay, so my, even though it's a little beat up, it probably has a little bit of value. Uh, more, I like comics. The Dark Celestials. My answer to my opinion, Marvel or DC, my answer is comics. Because <laughs> I like Pickle as much as like Batman. No, I don't know. I don't know if I like Pickle. But I love comics. Comics are the best. So DC, Image, Batman, Superman, X-Men, Batman, Spider-Man. doesn't matter. If, as long as it's a, a character. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, as long as it's a comic, I like it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not picky at all. I like interesting and different and rare and weird and common and and just like anything. So the answer to that is uh, Marvel or DC. My answer is comics. All comics, comics, every form of comic ever. Okay, this box we're gonna do our first Adventure Time. I bought so much Adventure Time. I probably bought like a long box worth. Yeah, I like the oddball. I like oddball if it's interesting or goofy or funny or like even if it's boring, I still kind of like it just for something different. The thing is, Spider Man is always Spider Man. He's he, you know he swings around, he shoots his webs at some people, and and he saves the day. And it's like the same story every time. It gets kind of boring. <laughs> you like pick him one than Batman? Uh, maybe, maybe. And like in my whole history of liking comics, Batman's higher up on that list. But currently, I probably have more interesting interest in Pickle. Just because it seems different. Yeah, reading. And I don't read as many comics as I like. I'm just having fun comics. Just comics. I'm having fun just looking at them, sharing them, making videos with them. Okay, this one was uh, $86 for 32 books. So I think I paid $3 a book. And I just, I feel like it's time to, to stock up on Adventure Time. Uh, it's sort of an investment, sort of the fill in my collection. Um, is that, I love Spider-Man, but I'm also bored of Spider-Man. Oh no, which girl am I going to date? Oh no, gotta save the day and I can't work today. Oh no, it's like, it's the same kind of angsty everything, every issue. It's just changed up a little bit. I mean, but I love Spider-Man. I mean, every time there's a movie or a show or anything with Spider-Man, I get really excited for it. I'm just, when it comes to comics, I just don't really want to read more Spider-Man comics. And I'm not hating on Spider-Man. I still collect them, but I don't get as much of excitement over Spider-Man. Just because I've been... Spider-Man's been part of my life for 50 years. I, you know, I'm, I'm 47 now. So I've liked Spider-Man since I was probably like 5. So 42 years of Spider-Man love. That's a long time. Exactly. We all grow up. I'd rather see uh, like a dramatic love story or something. Or someone struggling to pay his... Uh, Cable bill. <laughs> He's really got to watch his new favorite show, but he can't pay the cable bill. Like, I, like I don't know. That would I'd find that interesting. Okay, so I'll just I'm gonna go through these fast. So these I paid um, about three dollars a piece, which is probably a little bit high on them. But I think there's a couple more expensive ones mixed in. And uh, if I have duplicates, I'm gonna put the duplicates in my shop for five bucks. 
Oh, also, this is one I really wanted because I think... Oh, no, it's not this one. This one. So this one is, uh, I believe, the first appearance of Steven Universe in comics. So I have a... Like, this is only a 5 to $10 book. I have a feeling this is a book that's going to be worth hundreds within 5 to 10 years. So I'm actually... I'm going to try to hoard a short box of these. Uh, Venture Time Annual number one. Uh, Winter Special number one. And who knows if any of these have, like, a first appearance or something. Oh, well, I guess you, you've been only Spider-Man for 42 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, Thomas, I would love to see. I still have to order a copy of your book. I have a, the Machine Girl. I have an older issue of that series. And I have it right on my desk to remind me every day that I have to buy your book. And I just haven't gone around to it. Like, I always forget, and then I see that book, and it reminds me. So I have a reminder. I think about you d daily, Thomas. I just haven't bought it. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is another reason why I paid a little bit more on this lot. So this is uh, number one. It's a fourth print. So it's not as rare or valuable, but it's probably... Well, it's not as valuable as the first print, but it's probably rare. The later printings, I'm sure, were smaller prints. Uh, so I'm guessing they probably only did a few thousand of these. So this would be the fourth printing of their first appearance in comics. Uh, number two, second print... I think the last second print I had, I sold for like 10 bucks. Uh, number three, f first print. Number four, first. So there's some first prints of the earlier issues or the AB. So they, there was an AB cover of all the original ones in the first prints. Yeah. So yeah, this actually three dollars a piece is great because a lot of these are $10 issues. Any of these that are under 10. And I might, I used to sell all these if I had them already, but I might start holding on to a lot of these. I feel like really strong speculator feels because I love Adventure Time so much. And I have a feeling this is the kind of thing that people will pay a lot of money for eventually. Um, yeah, Spook Tackle is first. Now, Thomas, do you know if the Adventure Time with Fiona and Cake is Fiona and Cake's first appearance? I'm pretty sure it is. I went really heavy. You're going to see a lot of them today. But I, just, I couldn't figure out if there's any earlier appearances of her. Because I just like... With the new show out, I was like, oh, the prices are probably peaking. And I looked on eBay and they weren't. So I was like, oh, they're not peaking. Okay, let me just buy up as much as I can afford. And I bought I bought out eBay pretty much, but then a lot of people listed more. <laughs> I almost went back for round two. Just because I feel like they're so under... Um, you know, the print runs are really low on that stuff. And there's usually only a handful listed on eBay. You go for a big, expensive key issue, and you can find thousands of them listed. But uh, Venture Time books, you, like number one, there's usually only like one or two listed, or maybe like a handful listed. So I like the rare stuff. I like the rare stuff that's nostalgic for people that are like 15 right now. Okay, yeah. So I bought like 30 or 40 copies in this haul of her first appearance. Okay. So we got uh, Adventure Time number 11. This is the B cover. First print. 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, I love that cover. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and oh, I'm just going through these quick and 21. Okay, so nothing of super high value, but really strong speculator value on that lot. So that's like I don't really spec that often, but I love Adventure Time so much. So I have really high, high uh, expectations that they will be super collectible. Okay, I got this giant. Oh, this is funny. I bought two slab books from Bryce Comics, another show, and they shipped them in a giant BCW box. Is because one of the slabs is oversized. All right, so let's get these two slabs out. Uh, yeah, Scooby Doo is hot because there's new content out. You know, new movies, new shows. So it's multi generational right now. Uh, okay, so I got Geiger number one, kind of a spec book. I do really like Geiger. That's uh, that was fifty six for a nine eight. So Geiger One is kind of a book that I've purchased multiple times. I'm I like Atomic Bomb covers, and I think it's just like a fun series. So that was one I grabbed for. Uh... Yeah, the first uh, appearance of Steven Universe I think is such an underrated book right now. It was like ten bucks maybe. I have a feeling that will be a book that will be hundreds within five to ten years. So I might I might have to try to get a graded copy. Uh, I did. I got I got uh, a nine eight and nine nine of the trade versions from um, Bryce Comics. I'm really happy with them. I thought they were super cool. I um I like the. I don't even with the controversy. I think the controversy has actually increased the value. Uh, so yeah, I got one. Um, 
like a month ago maybe whenever the box i'm mean, his september box i'm definitely going to try to buy uh depending on how cool the cover is i'm gonna get a bunch of them uh and then we got harley number three in this really giant slab still nine eight this one was 40 bucks i thought for 40 bucks that was like a really cool deal okay bryce comics get those out of the way i'm just trying to go through all these boxes to make a little more room <laughs> there's so much stuff here to go through i think we'll be here for another hour or two or three or four might have to hold all over to another stream uh okay this was a box i got from uh absolute comics so they they're the people that do the uh white widow series it's so weird to focus on this so i decided i've been wanting to collect some of the rare white widow books because some of them are absolutely stunning some of them i don't like that much and they're kind of expensive for what they are but what they did was all right this night for 283 dollars shipped they had these limited edition uh, folio box sets. So each box... All right, let me just fix this back. Okay, so it's 287. Each box had three metal covers, which are like retail $1 to $200. Uh, two books that were... This is 36 boxes, so this is 23 of 36. So they had two books limited to 36 books, each limited uh, match the box. And then uh, I think one other rare box. So, I, you know, I decided for $283, why not? I have been wanting, and plus it had this cool store folio. I always say, if I had the room, I would love to just have a whole ton of these to put my comics in. I would love to just have a library full of comics and these folio books. Uh, I could order from a distributor, but I don't want to spend that much money on new stuff. New stuff, uh, like it's hard to sell it because every store has it. So I like to sell used stuff when I do sell, and comics are not my main. Uh, source of income in my shop i sell a lot more funko pops and um trading cards and records uh this week though with uh anthony's collection i'm gonna try to sell a lot more comics so i'm gonna be putting fifty thousand comics into the shop this month just it's a test go spend 20 grand uh see what i get see how it sell so far in the first week we've only put out about a box and a half out of the six and i've already sold three hundred dollars in four days so i feel like at that rate i would sell 500 a week so it takes me a month to, to pay for the first batch. So I think within like three to four months, I'll be able to sell enough to cover the full 20K. Uh, okay, so in this box, we got a Wayward Sons graphic novel. This one is signed by a whole bunch of the creative team. They only did 250 signed, limited edition. I think it was the whole run was only 250 copies. So I thought that was super cool. Uh, oh, this is a separate book I bought for four bucks. Wait, Widow number three. Uh, this was one of the big hits though. And I was thrilled. So this is a Sun kamanaki uh it's a foil white widow cover this cover is gorgeous i think value this book alone is like a 200 hundred dollar book so it's actually i hit the one i kind of wanted because i love her artwork i've been trying to collect more of it so i was thrilled to get that um all right thomas good night i'll talk to you soon we can we can figure out what we're doing with the trade i cannot wait to do that uh, and then this is, see, this is limited 23 out of 75. So they only did 75 of this cover. So I make boys cry. I don't know the number, but that's super limited. Uh, this is the second metal cover. This one I don't like as much. So I'm not, like, it's cool to get, but I was basically looking for my favorite artist. So this is just like a little added bonus. And then the third one was this White Widow one in gold, which I know is super limited. I think they only make like 20 of these or so. That's super cool. And then this is another White Window uh, limited 23 of 75 books. So another super uh, rare print. And then this was a separate auction. I paid $150 for it. It's a gold medal Sabine Rich White Widow cover. I, you guys know I collect everything I can get Sabine Rich. So when he's he showed a bunch of medals he had and he asked if anyone wanted to buy them. I was like, yeah, I'll buy that one. So it was just, I spent like $400 a night. It was kind of expensive, but I feel like I got a really good price on that. Really happy with those. Okay, where's the box? Thank you, Tina. Yeah, if you guys want to vote for me, that's that's awesome. I don't think I have a chance in that category because, you know, I'm up against Jen Mint and a couple other really big, much bigger channels. But I um, I want Tina to win. So vote for Tina. <laughs> I know Tina wants to promote for me, but I want to promote for Tina. I think it would be super cool if Tina won. I'd be, I would be so thrilled if she was one of the top winners. Uh, okay, so that was that box. Let's throw that in the process pile. I'm going to have such a trash pile tonight. Uh, okay, let's... Wait, I did that box already. Yeah, okay, we did those two boxes. All right, I'm just trying to go through all the different piles 
see what we can go through. Uh, okay, let's do a one little ziggy break. I appreciate it, Zena. Vote for me if you guys want to. That'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, I, it would be cool to do like a, a comic. I would like that. I just I can't afford it at the moment. Um, okay, so this this was cool. This another interesting. So this came from Belgium, but it's an Italian Ziggy item. That would be super awesome, Tina. I would love that. So I, I was thrilled to see this. Now this was expensive too. I think I paid fifty bucks for this, mostly on shipping. But it was a super super cool Italian like pen on a rope. With the Ziggy that says, I like you. Uh, what year is it? 1982? That is super cool. So it was an Italian Ziggy item that I bought in Belgium. I thought it was weird. To, like, It's fun buying international Ziggy items. It's always weird to me when they come out of different countries than they're from. So I just thought that was super awesome. Here, I'm going to put that right there for a minute. Okay, let me get through this one little box here. So we have one more, one less box to go through. Okay. Okay, this was uh, oh my comic shop order. I paid $253 for four comics. So this was, again, kind of the Adventure Time kick, but also uh, a few extra grabs that were cheap. So these are just three things. I've told you guys in the past that with uh, my comic shop, a lot of times I put random books into um, my shopping cart, and they sit there for months until I have enough to fill order because I don't want to pay $7 to ship one book. Uh, so I usually wait. So I had three things in my uh, box. So we have a Rose Besh Vampirella Dracula book. Uh, this was $3.30. Love Rose Besh art. It's some of my favorite. Uh, we have Invincible Red Sonia number three. Awesome. Um, Amanda Connor cover. Black and white. That one was uh, three. No. Uh, yeah, $2.50. And then I bought uh, Drones number one. $2.50. I just thought it was a really beautiful cover. So those are just ones I had randomly in my um, shopping cart for like the longest time. Probably oof, a month or two. Just because I don't buy from that often just because I usually try to find better deals. Uh, but then I decided this slab book I was going to buy. And I paid $200 and... Uh, I think $220 for this slab. I, I don't know if it was a good price or not. Again, it was an Adventure Time book. And so I just, it was the one that I thought, so it's a Fiona Cake number one. So I believe her first appearance, right? And she has a new show that just came out. So I felt like this book should be going up in value. I don't think it has. And it's the one in 30 ratio. So there was only like six of them or something on the census. Super rare. A lot of people haven't graded. I don't know if they didn't grade it because it's rare or because um, it just didn't have the value to grade it. So I don't, 218 might actually have been a really high price on it. I am not sure. But I thought, you know what? It's worth taking a... First of all, I love the cover. The cover is absolutely stunning. And just one of those books where, like, I can't imagine it not gaining a really high price down the road. Just because it's her first appearance. It's the 1 to 30 ratio. It's an absolutely stunning cover. It's a 9-8. Uh, it looks like an older... Great. So they might have graded this one a while ago. Here, let me move this camera up just a little bit. Absolutely. So $218. I Maybe I overpaid on it. I don't know. All I know is there's only like five of these graded or 10 maybe at most. Very, very few graded. And it's her first appearance. It's not on the label though. I don't think they labeled them yet. But, um, you know, Natasha L... Allegri, Allegri. She helped create the Fiona version of the storyline. She also created Bee and Puppy Cat, which I absolutely love that cartoon. So I just like, you know what? I'm gonna this. Uh, this is why I decided I wanted to pay up on a nine eight on her first appearance. So I decided the one in thirty, the most beautiful cover, was the one I was going to get. Did I overpay? Maybe. Did I get a lot of enjoyment out of what I paid. Yes. I'm like, I'm thrilled to have it. So even if it's like 50 bucks in six months, you know what? There's so few of them out there. I'm like, it doesn't even phase me. Cause I know the long run, I have a feeling you'll have some value, especially if this series does really good. I haven't watched it yet. So I don't know if the first episode is good or not. Yeah. I'm taking a drink break. I need some hydration. But yeah, I'm, Adventure Time, I have high hopes for or high expectations, so I don't mind putting a lot of money into. I've, I've, I have already. 
a long box of different Adventure Time. So I've collected a lot of Adventure Time over the years that are just all different ones. But I feel like it's getting close enough to the point where they're going to hit nostalgia value soon that I'm willing to invest into them a little bit and pick up a few choice pieces or just like amass some of the first appearances if they're still relatively cheap. Like the issue with the first um, appearance of Steven Universe, 10 bucks. I feel like I should get like a hundred of those. Spend a thousand bucks because that could easily be a hundred, two hundred dollar issue, I think. Uh, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to look at it, Reef. That one I have not seen. Okay, I'm going to move out that stuff. Okay. What else? Oh. All right. I have so many different boxes that uh, I... Well, I have a whole ton. Exactly. I'm trying to mix it up so it doesn't get too boring. <laughs> like, if people don't like Ziggy, I'm going to show Adventure Time. If you don't like Adventure Time, I'm going to show you some slabs. Hey, Jimmy. Okay, th this is funny. This is a big old whatnot box where uh, one of the items I thought I was bidding on was a... Um, no, I haven't seen that, Davey. I'll have to look at that. That sounds amazing. Uh, Davey, after this video, can you actually put a comment in the description so I can look that up? And also, Reef, can you write that Wonder Woman in the comments? Because it's hard for me to find the conversation on the live stream. But if you leave a comment, I can look it up. And I, I definitely want to check it out. So this is funny. This is a big old package. I thought one of the things I bid on was a comic. So I didn't, when it came in, I'm like, what is this? But it's actually a poster. <laughs> And I, th you know, I wasn't paying attention. I paid like 10 bucks for it, maybe. And it was this really awesome Tyler Kirkham Spider-Woman poster. I think I paid either $13.44 or $12.91. And it's signed by him. And it's such a cool Spider-Woman poster. Oh, hey, Big B. Uh... Reef, are you saying that you have Cerebus books that you want to trade, or are you, you looking for Cerebus books? Because I, if you have some... Uh, yeah, that's got the Tyler Kirkham thing. Uh, what do I pay on this one? 13 No, I yeah, I paid $12.91 shipped. So less than 13 bucks. I thought that was awesome. I thought it was a comic, too. So I wasn't expecting a poster. The poster's almost cooler. I, uh, I really like collecting the posters because they're just like giant versions of the artwork so it's almost better than the comic and when i i used to think that prints were annoying because i didn't have wall space uh oh reef yeah i, I might be up to trade for some serious books books i have to look to see what i need um so what i do now is i get those big print books that you can put prints into them and you just turn the prints into like a giant book okay reef do you have any really low numbers or are they all kind of just like a random assortment because I think I have a pretty solid run between like 90 and, and 130 or 140. So I, I have to see which ones I need. I know I have some lower ones, but not a lot of lower ones. Uh, okay, one of these books I paid $4 for and one I paid 13 Oh yeah, I think this one I paid $4 for. Amazing Spider-Man number three. Just a really, really, really cool book. Cheap price though. All right, let me reset this up closer so we can see the comics. Okay, yeah, so that one was four bucks. Yeah, whoops. This new little stand I'm using is kind of hard to readjust. And then I think this one was uh, 13 bucks. So it's a Woman of Marvel, number one, awesome Christy Zulu cover. I, I Anytime I see a comic she did that I don't have, I try to pick it up. Oh, sweet, yeah, you have some semi-low issues. Yeah, Reef, you definitely will work. What kind of stuff are you looking for? Because I'd definitely be trading. Because I... I, as I was saying, I'm going to be making up short boxes, sort of mystery boxes, but I might show them on stream different character themed or single issue themed that I'm going to be trying to sell the, out of Anthony's stuff. But I also, I might be up to trade some stuff. So if someone's looking for things, it might be easier with the amount of comics that I'm going to have coming in. So yeah, I paid $30.35 total for these three items. I actually felt like a really good price for all those stuff. Really cool stuff. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, okay, we did that, we did that. All right, let's just start grabbing some random boxes. This was, uh, let's see, a Sleeping Giant, Whatnot Order, 2607. I suspect I just grabbed something that um, to enter their giveaway because they sometimes do really good buyer giveaways. So sometimes I just buy something to try to enter. So I don't remember if it was something I really, really wanted or something I just grabbed for a chance. Detectives and Spawn. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely have some Detectives and Spawn. 
Uh, okay, yeah. I, so I just grabbed this Dark Chu Wonder Woman. It was 20 bucks, which might have been kind of high on that. But I, I think he was giving away a really good give, uh, buyer giveaway. So I decided to enter. And, um, you know, I love Dark Chu stuff. So I don't know. It's a store exclusive, I believe. So I don't know if $20 was super overexpensive or, like, kind of the right, correct price. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, this one I paid $73.89. And, oh, yeah. Okay, so this was uh, one, two, three, four, five comics for $73. So what was that, like, $15 each? $14 each. So I kind of, it was overpriced a little bit, but I think they were all ratio variants for Fiona and Cake. So, again, I went kind of... Was it really advertising a UFO detection device? I love that. <laughs> That's a great ad that I got paid for. Do you guys mind getting UFO detection device ads? <laughs> yeah, I get paid. I probably need a nickel. Uh, not, uh, no, well, how many people are watching? Uh, 86 people? So if 86 people saw that, I probably made like uh, six cents. <laughs> yeah, I made it like a nickel. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, Fiona and Cake. Uh, I think that's number three. I love it. It's a um, Super Mario Brothers 3 homage. Absolutely love that. Uh, this is number one. This is the one in 25 ratio. First appearance of hers. That's amazing. This is uh, issue two or three. The one in 25. This is... This one actually, I think, was a rarer one, if I remember correctly. Like a, I forget which one this was. This was... Uh, yeah, this is the Heroes Convention. Number five. That one, I didn't really see that often. I knew I needed that one for my collection. So it was actually kind of fun to get some stuff for the collection as well, as well as some speculation books and another Virgin variant. So Virgin variants for like 13 each, I thought was like, it might've been a little bit overpriced, but I also think like super undervalued. Like overpriced for current value, but super underpriced based on what I think it should be worth. Her first appearance, a one in 25 ratio, should be like a hundred bucks. Yeah, every nickel adds up, it does. And, uh, I mean, I wish I was making hundreds of dollars a day. I would just do comic calls every day. I would have such a fulfilled life if all I had was a giant studio with plenty of room to sort comics. And then I just do comic calls every day. Or, like, five days a week. I would be so thrilled. Okay, this was three comics for 25 bucks, $24.90. And, oh, yeah, Adventure Time. Like I said, I went a little crazy. Adventure Time kick. I just felt like all the Fiona and Cake books were just way too undervalued for with the new series coming out and everything, and they're getting old enough to be just the right amount of nostalgia. Uh, so these, again, were like 15 each. I think that's a number one. That's a one in 15, and then these are like two or three. Uh, like, it's so undervalued. I feel like a one in 25. If that's the first appearance of a Miles Morales, and the one in 25, well, it's 40 grand. So I just like, so undervalued right now, I think. At least that's my opinion. All right, um, this was, uh, oh, that's more Adventure Time. Let's find something that's not Adventure Time, because I did go Adventure Time heavy. I want to mix it up a little bit. Uh, oh, this is just uh, p and Comics, another free comic. I have a few stragglers for when I was trying to win stuff. Oh, sweet, you have a good little selection of the lower numbers. So I'm just, I, I got so worn out trying to win 50 items in a month. It probably took me 200 hours to win that much stuff. And uh, that's, honestly, people think you're just getting free stuff. But it does take a lot of time, which is kind of work, to sit and try to win stuff. So I, I you know, I, I love winning stuff and whatnot. But I don't know if I would sit there trying to win as much as I can again. I felt like I wasted so much time. <laughs> it was a challenge. I like doing crazy challenges just to see what I could win. So what do I got? I got a Dr. Mirage. Don't know the number and the fix number three. Nothing too exciting. But they were for free. Free is fun. Just takes a lot of time to win for free. <laughs> uh, what is this? This is... Okay, I gotta find another box with something a little bit more exciting. Alright, give me one second. Here, I'll just... I'll put a uh, Fiona Cake 3 on the screen for a second. I gotta grab the other boxes. I got like three or four boxes over here. Well, that's heavy. Uh, okay, 
Uh, let's do another Ziggy item. We're gonna mix it up again. Yeah, it, it's always fun to win and it's worth trying to win if you're trying to buy something, but trying to win as often as possible is just going into random rooms that you don't care about is not so fun. Because then you win junk and you waste your time kinda. Okay, so this was an eBay item. I paid $26.98. Oh, this is super cool. I uh, I got, got a new protector for it, but it's a sign publicity still. It says uh, for, for Aaron from Ziggy and Tom Wilson. So it's signed by Tom Wilson. It's got a, um, a JSA certificate, so it's been verified. Uh, for $26, that's super cool. Yeah, and uh, he's not with us anymore. I think he died in 2011 or 12. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, giveaway trade, they still do those occasionally. And like I like if I'm in a room that I really enjoy, like comic traders, it's fun to try to win. And then I try to... Uh... Holy crap, that's a lot of books, Big B. What are you going to do with 3,200 books? That's crazy. You're going to be opening up a shop again before you know it. <laughs> okay, and one more eBay item, 15 bucks. I thought this was super cool. Oh, I'm losing my... my... Backdrop. Give me one second. Technical difficulties. That's a lot of... Uh, I'm assuming it just uh, a whole bunch of just still selling modern stuff, but like fun to get them cheap like that. Uh, I do kind of like picking up cheap bulk just for my own collection and to sell it and all that. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, we need a big, long uh, four-hour stream, Big B. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's take this item out uh this is like a super awesome to me i don't know if it'll be awesome for you guys but it's a piece of old media uh, yeah it but a seller gets mad but here's the thing i as i say it's better to have a thousand people in your room and someone who doesn't buy wins than have no one in your room and then have like a buyer win right because then for every thousand, or even if you have a hundred people in your room, there's a better chance of two or three of those people that buy something than if you only have five people in your room. Giveaway is just a, a, a promotional thing on whatnot. And if you're going to do a giveaway, does it really matter who wins as long as there are people there that buy stuff? Only sucks when you do giveaways and no one's buying anything. Then that's the worst. But then you can just end the show. I've done that myself. Okay, here we go. We got Ziggy's gift. So the Ziggy Christmas cartoon on a, a Betamax tape. It's a ba Betamax Ziggy's gift. For 15 bucks. I thought that was so freaking cool. I think that's the fifth or sixth different media I have with Ziggy's gift on it. I have one international tape. I have a VHS. I think I have a second version of the VHS. I have a DVD. Uh, I have one regret in Japan. There was a Ziggy's gift on film. Like a whole film canister full of it. And it... Um, uh, it was, they wanted $1,000 for it. And I was like, oh, I can't spend 1000 So I didn't buy it. I realized I don't have a high-definition version of uh, Ziggy's Gift in my collection. And then I was thinking, you know, that video, that actual canister with the Ziggy's Gift in it, might be the best current example of Ziggy's Gift in existence. I should have bought it and digitized it. And then let and then send the, the file or whatever to um, Ziggy so that they can actually produce them. Because the... the uh, DVD that came out was kind of lower quality. I would love to have a high definition version. So I just like, I thought about it about six months after I didn't buy that canister and I kind of regret not buying it, even though it was a thousand dollars. I feel like it would have been good to help preserve Ziggy. Uh, okay, this is, uh, oh, okay. I think this is a comic book I thought I lost. I was going crazy looking for, if this is the comic, I think it is. Uh, it's it's got just the one side that's clear so it actually looks really cool and oh there's a little bit of a crack in the plastic but that's okay i'm just happy to have the tape it doesn't have a name on the side there it's smaller than a vhs um i think if vhs was like 240 lines of resolution i think Betamax was like 340 or so. It's like 20 or 30% more resolution than VHS. It, just, it lost out because it just didn't get marketed as well, but it was actually a better format than VHS. Um, oh, wow, Bigby, that is amazing. 
A Marvel Comics number one would be amazing, but even like a coverless copy would be tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> I want an Action Comics as well. Dark Hawk. I have probably like five Dark Hawk ones. I get them every once in a while. I just find them cheap in dollar bins occasionally. And I like picking them up. I think it's fun. I feel like I've won the internet every time I get a Dark Hawk one. Dark Hawk one is definitely a meme comic book that's fun to add to the collection each time. Okay, if this is the comic, I think it is. I thought I lost this package and I was really getting upset about it. I could be wrong though. Maybe it's something completely different. If it is the comic, I think it is though. I'm going to be like jumping for joy because I was like kind of bummed out. I thought I got stolen. Oh man, I really, really hope this is the comic because I was just like, I was bummed out the last two days trying to find it. I thought I logged in and I, I tried to leave feedback for people as I uh, opened the, the packages so I know which ones I got, but this one I didn't leave feedback for. So I don't know how that happened. I think, I hope, I really hope it's the comic. It is, it's a, uh, oh wow, let's see if it is. Okay, I'm not gonna look at it. I'm just gonna, rev I'm gonna reveal it on screen. It should be. If it's the comic, I think it is. It's a super... No, I love Dark Hawk. I, I pick him up every time I see him. He's not valuable, but... Ah, oh, jeez. My back hurt. And I need a better studio. I hate filming in the basement. Uh, I, Reef, I, I love selling and whatnot. I might try eBay Live, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't love eBay as a company. eBay is... Uh, I've been kind of anti-eBay for years. Just because I don't like the way they treat sellers. They make it difficult. I, what's a good run? I'm not sure what good run is. Okay, let's put them in. How cool is that though? A Betamax and a signed photo. What cool is the items? Okay, all right. So it should be a sexy Vampirella cover by Sun Kamineki. Maybe it's not, but let's see. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I thought I lost that cover. I thought someone stole that. What a sexy cover. Look at that thing. I love the Sun Kamineki covers, though. That was great. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Phew. I thought that was stolen. I was like, I didn't log it in, but it looks like I didn't open it either. So I probably just didn't process it properly. Woo! Okay. Sweet. Let's see what else we got. Uh, okay. This was $11.20 on Macari. Oh, it's another Ziggy item. Okay. So back to Ziggy. All right. This is super, super, super sweet. So this is, uh, when you're not around, so this is a reprint of the very first Ziggy book that came out in 1968. This is, uh, I think a 1991 reprint. 1991, I believe. Uh, I think some of the art was redone. It has kind of the old school look, but it looks slightly modernized. And I don't see the date on this thing. I don't see a date, but I'm pretty sure that was a 1991 reprint of that. So that's super cool. Happy with that. I'm going to put that behind the picture so the picture doesn't get warped. Yeah, so that's a beautiful cover. That So Sun Kamineki was also the uh, the one foil I got. You went on a, a serious spot? Yeah, no, it's so easy to go on. When you have a little bit of money to spend, it's it's easy to go on a, uh, a buying spree when you're buying things you love. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the thing. That's the cool thing about collecting is if you spend too much, you can always sell it. And a lot of times you can sell it for a profit. So it's uh, it's not like the worst idea to spend too much money on collectibles. Now, if you went uh, uh, on a drinking binge and you spent five grand drinking yourself to death, you'll end up with a uh, destroyed liver and not stuff you can sell. <laughs> Unless people really want some piss or something. Uh, okay, this was a eBay purchase, $23.95, two comics. Uh, I don't know if it's more Adventure Time or if it's something else. Uh, well, Ziggy, Ziggy was um, 12 years after Peanuts. So it's it's a similar era. But he uh, he's a little bit different. I mean, he's a cartoon strip character. So same same medium. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this was $23 for two comics. Yeah. DUI. So this was, uh, again, I bought this one for one specific, but the first comic's cool because it's Adventure Time beginning of the end. It's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So this one's probably short printed. Uh, but then another copy of this first appearance of Steven Universe does have a little bit of a dent right there, but that's okay. I think I'm going to hoard on to these books and try to get a, yeah, probably, yeah, probably I'm on the kid, a DUI, uh, a, a liver transplant, and a few other things that cost you money and not uh, 
minus money. All right, we're going to leave uh, Vampirella on the screen for a few minutes. Okay, let's find something that's not Adventure Time or Ziggy. Uh, free comic book from Lost Artifacts. Left over from my trying to win 50 times. And it was... Oh, this is cool. It's that uh, image first. I hate Fairyland number one. Uh, I do. I mean, I, I listen, I'm 47. So I grew up with Transformers and G.I. Joe. Absolutely love both uh, things. So Void Rivals seems like a cool thing. I haven't read it yet, but I've collected a few of them. I definitely feel like I'll get more heavily into them, though. Uh... Let me find something a little bit more exciting. I have a lot of Adventure Time, but I want to try to go through a lot. Of, all right. This was from uh, Elvis NC. El, El, Elvis Us NC. I'm not sure. It's another free win. <laughs> Let's see what I got. Uh, this is kind of cool, actually. I won a Web of Spider-Man number nine. That's actually kind of a nice older Copper Age book with the win. So I thought that was a pretty cool gift. I'm going to move Ziggy up here now so we can move comics over to look at. Okay, Spider-Man. Okay, let's see what this was. This was, uh, oh, another free win. This was from Moon Dop Collectibles. I won. I left them a feedback. Then I came into his stream a few days later, and he's like, oh, I didn't realize you were Pop Comics. So I thought that was kind of cool. I like when people recognize me on uh, whatnot. All right, Don, I... I or no, Reef, I'll take that as a, a very good... Because I don't read too much either, so I feel the same way. Invincible 1 is definitely high on my want list right now. And I think like a 8590 you can get for like 800 now. So I might end up with like a... a maybe a 90 is what I want to aim for. So we have Extreme Venomverse number 4. That's kind of a cool uh, freebie. That was a fun win. Uh, I feel like I need to open up another short box to put comics into. Man, all right. Hope you guys like Adventure Time. I think I have... I'm trying to find what else I have that's not Adventure Time, but I know there's a lot of Adventure Time still in these here boxes and piles. Oh, God, this print is in the way. Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, is this a KRS box? Uh, okay, this one... Who is this from? Doesn't I, I accidentally crossed out. Oh, this is another eBay purchase. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Was uh, Big B... Uh, I mean, Big B, was uh, the Transformer movie decent? So I really, really liked the Bumblebee movie. I thought that was a, like, a good Transformer movie. Every other one has been kind of bad. So Bumblebee, I think, is the only one I really, really like. Maybe the first one was okay. So I'm just curious if they're going more on that like kind of Bumblebee better storytelling route or if it's more just like bad CG uh, over-the-top route. Uh, so this was 45 bucks. This was... Um, Adventure Time with Fiona and Cake, number one. So her first appearance. It's a Dynamic Forces. So it has the certificate. And it's got a um, Ken Heiser remark on it. I thought that was such a cool looking remark. So I thought 45, 45 might be a high price on that. But being at her first appearance, I feel like this is going to be a steal. I feel like this is the kind of comic that will have a lot of value down in the future. Uh, so I I I like nine O's. Nine O's look almost perfect. Nine O is a great grade if you just want a really nice looking slab copy of a book that's still affordable. If you were you here at the beginning, I bought two amazing nine O graded books just because the price was cheap. So you just you go to the shop and you get two new books for a ten, like you spend like forty bucks a week basically. I mean that's a great way to collect because at least that then you can enjoy and read them and. Uh, it's not too expensive. $40 a week, $50 maybe, is, I, I think, a very affordable hobby. Okay, we have a KRS box. This says I paid $74.33. And this was... Uh, oh, this is funny. I accidentally bought... Um, so I paid $70 for this. Oh, Fat Boy Kicks, I'm sorry you had pneumonia. That sucks. I'm hoping you're feeling better. I've, I've, I was sick, what, three weeks ago, and my brain still feels very hazy. And um, I just, I've been kind of emotionally out of it, kind of just too overwhelmed and just like too many things going wrong at once that making life a bit hard. So I'm, that's why last night I really want this stream because the comic haul videos just make me so happy. 
And uh, I was having so many problems last night. I had to just quit and not do it last night. And it was kind of bumming me out. But now it's working well. So I'm hoping you're feeling better and like getting back to 100%. Because I know sometimes after pneumonia, it lingers for weeks on end. Okay, that sounds awesome, Big B. I definitely want to um, check it out then. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm really hoping they do some great G.I. Joe content. Because the G.I. Joe movies have been terrible. And I love G.I. Joe. So there's not a new generation that loves G.I. Joe. There aren't like 10-year-olds or 8-year-olds today that love G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is a very much 45 to 50-year-old guy thing. And it's not uh, something that the kids... I want great modern-day G.I. Joe. I really want it. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so this was 70 bucks. It was a double pack of signed Ivan Tao books. Absolutely love the way the signature looks, the gold and the placement. Perfect placement. Absolutely hate the placement and the color because you can barely see it. But it's still a cool Ivan Tao signature. So that one might have been a little bit high in price, but I'm happy. Like this book especially is amazing. Absolutely love that book. Love that book. I, although I... I I think I love that book the most tonight. That one may be the second most. <laughs> such a gorgeous book. It really, Sun Kamineki does such a beautiful uh, illustration. I really, I need to collect more of her books. Uh, all right, what else do we got? Uh, okay, this is 45 bucks. I mean, uh, Megan Fox and Shayla LaBeouf did make the first two Transformers pretty decent. I like them. But I really... I think Bumblebee has been my favorite Transformer so far. I really liked that. I thought it was a good story story. Not just like goofy garbage. Hot fire. Alright, so this was three lots of 15. They were doing a two for 15 sale. So I bought three lots for 15 each. <laughs> Meds got you loopy. Well, you know, sometimes you need to be loopy when you're um, not feeling... Well. I still like the G.I. Joe cartoon. I've watched episodes and still got chills like they're not the best cartoons you know, can tell they're kind of age but like i recently maybe six months ago i watched an episode where they go into a different dimension where uh like the baroness is a good woman and i i enjoyed it i thought it was a really fun cartoon uh okay so this is a really fun uh i think it, yeah it's kale new so kale new uh virgin variant and regular version for 15 bucks that felt like a steal and then i got this uh perillo astonishing x-men um uh, was it unknown comics exclusive with the virgin variant for 15 for the pair i thought that was cool and then i got two ninja funk rare books i got the uh, bolo playground blank variant and the uh, akira homage ninja funk so for 15 that might be a little behind those two but i was really happy with those i got those from uh genghis sean was running the show he's really nice he wants to hang out with me when um at new york comic con so i might do some stuff with him yeah, that one G.I. Joe channel. Yeah, they run the G.I. Joe cartoons like nonstop all day long. I can sometimes put that on just in the background and I really enjoy it. Like I don't pay full attention to it because it is kind of eh, not as great. But I still get such a nostalgia. And honestly, I tear up when I see the um, opening for the G.I. Joe movie. Like that opening three minute segment with the music and the orchestration, everything about. To me, that is just nostalgic perfection that it really it gives me tears because I love it so much. It had, you know, it just represents a time in my life where all I cared about was G.I. Joe, watching my cartoons, and reading my comics. Yeah, no, I I, I, I hoard comics more than I read them, but I, don't, I collect comics. Because I don't keep every comic I know I feel like, or it looks like I do, but I do sell a lot of stuff. But there is some method to my madness. And uh, honestly, like this, I'm buying this book because the cover's gorgeous. I'm not really buying it to read it. I don't know how good the book itself might suck. I do buy stuff to read, but I don't buy just to read. I buy to make videos. So the actual video experience is a main reason why I buy. I buy to collect. I buy joy. I also buy for future value potential. And I buy just for the fun of comics. Comics bring me so much joy. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, you had to watch the episode because if you didn't watch it, you never saw it again because it was, you know... Um, you know, you, you couldn't record stuff in 1985. You couldn't, uh, oh, you know what's funny? Okay, I just had a G.I. Joe thought, uh, yesterday. So, 1982, 83, my brother got the G.I. Joes. Absolutely loved them. I played with them. 
and uh, I fell in love with them. I got the, um, for my birthday, I got the laser cannon. Then for Christmas, I got the Jeep. Uh, then in 84, I remember going to Toys R Us and buying like eight figures. I had 20 bucks. I bought eight figures. 84, love G.I. Joe. 85, I, got, I just wasn't into G.I. Joe as much. 86, not really into G.I. Joe. But then 87, I went heavily and bought all the new G.I. Joes again. I was like, why in 87 did I love G.I. Joes? But like 85, 86, I didn't. I realized that it was summer 86 is when I um, I started reading comics or really got into comics. So by 87 is really when I was collecting G.I. Joe religiously. So I must have been really into the comics and that's why I started buying the, um, the action figures again. I remember one time my mom had a doctor's appointment at like 3 30, 4 o'clock. So I was watching G.I. Joe and she's like, we gotta go, we're running late. And so I got in this huge argument with me, with her to watch the last five minutes of G.I. Joe. And I missed it. And like, I was mad for so many, like I'm still mad today. <laughs> it's a stupid doctor's appointment. Uh, where did I put my scissor? I, can't find I don't even remember which episode of G.I. Joe. I should really go back and just watch all the G.I. Joe episodes. Yeah, it's hard to read. I end up buying... Usually when I read, I tend to read more trade paperbacks. And I um, I tend to... I like reading manga more often, honestly. I feel much more interested in reading manga. Because I feel like I... Um, I just enjoy it. Because it's more action-packed. And it's more storytelling through pictures and words than... I mean, through pictures than words. Whereas a lot of American comics are very dialogue-heavy. Not so much about the action or the, the image. I, just, I really enjoy a really beautiful looking story. If, if the artwork's good, but the storytelling or the words are kind of eh, I, I can still enjoy it as long as it looks beautiful. If it has beautiful words and great storytelling and the artwork's kind of bad, eh, I can still kind of enjoy that. But like bad artwork with bad storytelling, I just like, I can't read that. I don't want to read boring or non-interesting Spider-Man stories. But I'll read, I've been reading some manga I want to read more. I just, I, I'm so busy doing YouTube and my store and everything else. I just don't have the time. And so it's just like, every time I read, I feel guilty that I'm not accomplishing something I'm trying to accomplish. All right. Ugh, this box, I forgot to open it. Oh, it was, oh, I'm trying to open it up. It was a free win from going twice. So I'm assuming it's nothing too exciting. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim is also a beautiful comic book. I love the Scott Pilgrim comic. That's one that is worth checking out. Because you can go through the whole thing in like 10 minutes. You read a whole volume of it. Okay, so this is a free win. Let's see what I want. Oh, this is a cool one. Uh, Black, Black Cloak, number one. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks like a fun indie book. Yeah, I love the Thundercats cartoon in 85. I didn't really buy the toys, though. 85, I was buying uh, Transformers and, uh, yeah, I think Transformers. That was my Transformer and GoBot year. I bought a ton of Transformers and GoBots. Okay, that's, all right, that box is all Adventure Time. Let me find something that's not Adventure Time. Or maybe it's all Adventure Time. Adventure Time. Okay, this was, uh... 1998. Honestly, I rewatched the Thundercats with uh, Allison 15 years ago, and the original Thundercats cartoon is still really, really good. Yeah, 85. I got so many Transformers. I got the um, the the white jet. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name, and then the um, the track that was the the giant guy that turned into the little tank that went around the track with the red head and the yellow. Uh, highlights. I got that and the white jet for that Christmas. Those a couple, I think like five of the small mini ones. I got the little UFO that was green, the little blue boat. I'm drawing a blank on the names though. All these names from my childhood have been losing my head lately. I know, man, you'd be so rich if you knew. Buy those and just hoard onto them. Uh, okay, I paid $20 for this. It's another uh, one in 50. That was probably the one I paid the most for. I bought other copies cheaper. Um, Oh, is it? Scott Pilgrim is your favorite movie? It's a good movie. I watched it with the, uh, my son maybe four or five years ago, and he loved it. We, I, it's still it's a good movie. I really enjoy it. Uh, so I paid 20 for that. I maybe overpaid on that, but again, it's her first appearance. Jet Fire. That's it. Jet Fire. I'm so bad at remembering names lately. My brain is just empty. It's like it's pushing the names out of the way so I can remember other shit. <laughs> okay, Jet Fire gets knocked out so I can remember Ninja Funk. 
Uh, yeah, Jetfire was an amazing... That Jetfire was like the coolest transforming toy. I think the only one I liked better than that was Grimlock. Grimlock was another fantastic, just the mechanism and everything. Oh, yeah, the anime on Netflix looks amazing. It's it's closer to the uh, the graphic novel, so I'm actually really excited to watch that. I think that'll be fun. Maybe it'll be time to grab some Scott Pilgrim before the prices go up on that. Uh, okay, so this is also from the uh, Absolute Comics Group. So it's White Widow Packs. They were doing mystery packs. So this one I won for $71.99. They said it was a four hundred five retail. I don't know how accurate the price is. They were a little bit high. But I want to buy these because a lot of them have just rare variants in them. Or stuff that I can't get on eBay at all or for cheap. So $71. Well, how many books was it? It's one, two, three, four, five books. So that's like $15, $14 each. Yeah, Omega Supreme. That was an uh, awesome one. That's the one, right? That's the one with the um, the the track. 50 bucks. Man, giving it away. But that, I mean, 50 bucks in 87 was a lot of money. Uh, okay, so what do we have? We have White Widow number two. This one is double signed by, uh, I think, Jimmy Tyndall and... Uh, it doesn't say who signed it, but I think that's that's Jamie and Tyndall. So that's super cool. Uh, White Widow number three. This one is double signed as well. Uh, not sure the number. That one's double signed. So it's all signed by Benny Powell and then I think the artist or another person. Uh, White Widow number one, double signed. And then the real value in the pack is the medal. So this is a... Uh, not sure the artist on that one. Uh, but a super cool... Um, what do you call that? Now I'm drawing a blank. What do you call it when you use a lot of little images to make a bigger image? So these ones are like a hundred something dollars retail. So like what I paid, it's for that. Yeah, it was Omega Supreme the one or is Omega Supreme? No, Metroplex is the big building one. So Omega Supreme is the one that had the, the red body, the gray legs and arms that would film a, form a track that go. Yeah, I got that one at 87. That was my 87 Christmas. Awesome. No, no, 85 Christmas. 87 was uh, something else. 86 was my mask year, I think. I think I got a bunch of mask toys in 87. I mean, yeah, uh, 86. Man, it's hard to remember. <laughs> okay. This mystery packs, I paid uh, 67. They said this one was worth 200. So again, it's five bucks. I paid uh, uh, 12 50 each or something like that. So let's see what we got. We got a um, fun foil e1 uh another one of these oh, mosaic is that what is it oh mosaic i think that one's fun uh a fun virgin variant another virgin variant and oh this is the one i was gonna say though because this is ariel diaz white widow i really like her artwork so this one alone is probably 30 to 50 i think so that kind of paid for so, so to me that was kind of a win because the other stuff eh, not as excited but the Ariel diaz is one i wanted so the main thing is i'm trying to get the artists i like that are um in white widow because they're just so hard to get because they're low print and they just charge so much retail that's why i buy these or this is why i was buying them uh so i bought number three for 66.36 so they said this was a 400 dollar pack so again that was uh like 15 dollars each uh, so we got uh, I Make Boys Cry, number two. This one's double-signed. Uh, White Widow, number two, double-signed. So these a lot of these are re just really low print runs. Uh, White Widow, not sure the number, but double-signed. Uh, White Widow, one. So that's a duplicate. I'll be able to send one. But this one was super cool. This is a um, Tyndall mosaic, I think. So uh, that one alone is probably worth 100 bucks. So more than what I paid. All right, Cosmos. Yeah, I love that UFO. I have like five of them now. Maybe not five, but every time I see them at like a garage sale or, or a flea market for five bucks or less, I pick it up. So I know I have multiples of the Cosmos. And then I had the little blue dune buggy, the uh, the boat, the yellow boat with the blue top, blue top, yellow boat, and then uh, the red tank, and then the red, um, uh, what would you call it? The a, a Hawk, not A, whatever, the airplane. The, the airplane, you know, wings body tail right airplane <laughs> i had five of those little teeny guys i absolutely loved them oh and i had the green little jeep 
Uh, okay, this one I paid more for. I paid ninety-seven thirty-six. This one was three. They called a three hundred and ten dollar pack. Oh, and this one, just the first two books were amazing. So we have White Widow Four, which is a homage to Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, was it three sixteen? Absolutely love this cover. Love the foil, and then the Virgin variant. It's you know a little bit more naked. Awesome covers. I love those homage covers. Uh, a Tyndall Virgin variant. Uh, not as familiar with that artist. Another one of these. So I actually, oh, this one's not signed though. I might keep a signed one and an unsigned one and then sell the rest. And then uh, no medals in that one. So that one was pretty cool. Oh, awesome, Don. Very awesome. Uh, okay, so next pack I got, I think I ended up buying, you know what's funny? I won a giveaway and then I ended up buying $500 worth of these packs. <laughs> I didn't mean to buy from them, but it's like, ah, oh, you know, cheaper shipping, let me buy some. And I bought one, I was happy, I bought another, I kept buying. Uh, this one I paid $100, so this is one of the last packs, 260 value, so I might have overpaid or a little bit on this one. Is it, it's a uh, White Widow, but it's their own White Widow, right? So I don't know how that competes copyright wise. Uh, all right, White Widow number six, this is a fun lenticular. I don't, I don't, how does it, I think her outfit kind of rips off a little bit. I don't see it so well. This one, it's kind of hard to see the lenticular. Uh, this really awesome foil one though. I love that cover. That It's like this kind of stuff is really what I'm looking for. Uh, this really beautiful Nathan Zardy Virgin variant too. I'm looking for the Zardy covers. Uh, White Widow number one, first appearance of White Widow and another fun lenticular. So her outfit kind of rips away. Uh, Greg Horn cover. That one's kind of cool. And then uh, that's the same one again. Okay. Uh, so these all... Hey, Ronnie. All, all these came from um, the uh, Absolute Comic Group. So I was buying their uh, mystery packs because I really want to get some of the rare White Widow books. So basically, I was buying them because I feel like if I bought these on eBay, they would cost double or triple the price. Uh, the Cobra Tank, the His Tank, is one of my all-time favorite toys. I have three of them now, I think. Every time I see one for like 10 bucks, I pick it up. Uh, okay, this is just a random. Oh, wait, I got one. No, yeah, one more mystery pack that I bought from uh, the Absolute Comic Group. It was $72.46. So they called this a 260 pack. So at five, 50, 75. So a little bit less than 50, like $14 each. Honestly, I think I got all these really good price because a lot of these, like a couple of them might be five, $10 books, but most of these I think would be over $15. So I think I got every single one at a discount, basically. Okay, let's see what we got. We got White Widow number four, awesome cover. Love the foil on that one. And then the Virgin variant version. Uh, White Widow five, White Widow one, and uh, the cool uh, Tyndall lenticular. Love that one. That one is super cool. I love these kind of you know gimmick foil covers, lenticular covers. Those are really awesome. Yeah, white widow uh, is is the black widow that's currently in the movies. She's the white widow, isn't she? I forget. My brain is drawn a blank. Okay, uh, this was from JB Fletcher. Uh, oh, this is a book he had on hold for me for a while. So this is eleven bucks, and it's a really fun, hard to play. No, Batman was seventeen. Batman was seventeen. It's supposed to look like an old video game. Awesome uh, Rose Bash cover. They have that one. I think that's a 1 in 25, I want to say. So that was a super cool variant. Oh, and then I also... This is also from J.B. Fletcher. I paid $24.74. Oh, this was just a mystery pack. I um, I like J.B.'s show, so sometimes I just buy from him to help support him a little bit. You know how it is when you want to support someone you enjoy your time with. So uh, he was doing mystery pool games. I don't really and generally like mystery pool games unless it's something like Absolute Comic Group where I know I'm getting really rare things. Um... So for $24, I don't know if this is the greatest haul, but, you know, I was, I'm happy enough. I got Amazing Spider-Man number 58. Uh, I think they're all variants of some sort. She-Hulk number one, the second print variant, Jen Bartel. Uh, I think this is a Spider-Woman variant. And a David Nakayama Daredevil number one. So I paid like $5 a piece on these. It might be higher than I normally like to pay, but it wasn't like a terrible price. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not like a big fan of... Um, mystery packs in general okay let me clear those out but yeah no the white widow covers are awesome i really like them i want to collect a lot more of them i will probably end up buying more of his mystery packs every time he does them because the mystery packs i think you get way better value than trying to buy now if you have a bunch of them the mystery packs might you might overdo it and get a lot of duplicates but if you don't have a lot of duplicates 
then the mystery packs kind of make sense. Uh, okay, I have more Bryce Comics slabs. So I feel like I buy one or two every single one of his uh, shows just to enter in his giveaways. And to, um, you know, sometimes they're just really cool books for cheap. Yeah, David Akiyama artwork in general is my favorite. So I do like to pick up whatever I can of his. So that is a really cool Daredevil cover. Okay, what do we got here? We got uh, Infinity Countdown number one. Let me readjust the camera for the slabs. You can see my face, but I want you to see the slab. Okay, there we go. There's the slab. I'll move over here so you can see it. What a beautiful Autogranov cover. Absolutely love that cover. That one was... Uh, how much should I pay for that one? Oh, I gotta get my thing out. I need a set. I need a better live streaming setup so it's not so much glare. I need to have like a black drop in front of it to kind of block me a little bit. There's things I want to do. Uh, that one is forty-one bucks. Forty-one bucks. What a great price for a beautiful autograph cover. Even if you're not a fan of Captain Marvel. I'm, I'm not buying it because it's Captain Marvel. I'm buying it because it's a beautiful Autogranov cover. Absolutely love his artwork. It's some of my favorite. Uh, oh, this next one was a really fun Chrissy Zulu cover. I really like her artwork, too. It's fun and whimsical. It's, like, cute. It's cutesy art. But I love the cutesy art. So we got uh, Batman Adventures Continue number one. I, I did... Uh, you're hearing Duran Duran music. <laughs> I did, um, ah, what you call it? So I bought some Chrissy Zulo prints, New York Comic Con two years ago. And some woman was, uh, harassing me saying like, she doesn't understand sexualized children or whatever, just because, you know, it's kind of more cutesy. I'm just like, what are you talking? She was like so offended by her artwork. And I was just like, no, I like to buy from female artist in the comic industry because I like supporting female artists. That's why I buy from Christy Zulu. I like her artwork and I like, you know, supporting female artists. I would like to see more of them get work. So I think it's really cool. I really enjoy, and she's really, really nice every time I meet her at the cons. I think I've met her five times now, four times, something like that. Uh, I still just think it's funny that someone got mad at me for buying Christy Zulu artwork. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's just keep the male-dominated artwork then. Uh, okay, and then this last book was uh, 88 bucks. Oh, did he? He did a Daredevil Durant? Oh, okay, interesting. That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Um, this, I think, is pretty rare. I got this one for 88 I don't know what the price is at the moment, but I believe this is a 1 in 25 Peach Momoko out, uh, Champions Outlaw variant. This thing is amazing. Absolutely love this one. Um... I don't know the exact rate. I think it's a 1 in 25. It might be a 1 in 50. 88 bucks. I felt like that was actually a great steal on that one. All right. Awesome slaps. Really happy with those. I look... I was floating. You saw my face floating in space. That's, uh... Can you see my face? Let's get some white light on. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I love Autogranoff. I'll buy Autogranoff stuff all the time. Autogranoff. You know what it is? I realize I, I'm really drawn... All right, Autogranoff is all color pencils, watercolors, ink on paper. Peach Momoko is watercolors, ink, and paint on paper. Chrissy Zulo is usually markers, pencil, ink on paper. I like traditional artists that do traditional artwork. I think though I'm really drawn to traditional artwork covers. That's why I tend to buy those artists more often than others. So, yeah. I do love it. I just love seeing more traditional work still around. Because who knows, with AI and everything else, it might become a lost art, or we might see a lot less creative people in the future if it's harder for creative people to have an income from doing their artwork. Because it takes a lot of time and energy to get good. And then once you put that amount of work into getting good, then it's hard to monetize that amount of effort. All right, most people see a, a painting or something that you spent 40 hours on, and they're like, oh, I'll give you 20 bucks for that. Not thinking, you know, how much is 40 hours at work? It's crazy. Uh, okay, this was a $20 eBay lot. Let's see what it was in here. I'm not sure. But, oh, okay. So this is... Oh, this is super cool. So this is... Um, 
this is again this is that first appearance of steven universe i believe but this is the one in 25 ratio how rare is this book and how expensive will this book be one day so this one i believe it's steven universe is yeah he's right he's on the front page and then he's previewed like th four or five pages in the back i believe yeah there's steven Universe. so this is the first appearance of steven universe in comics but this is the one in 25 ratio uh, would I pay 20 bucks for that? $20 for the 1 in 25 ratio feels like a steal. This is the kind of book I could see being a thousand bucks one day. Just because how many are out there? There's probably not that many. I don't think the regular book would have been printed that high. And so the 1 in 25s, they probably, you know, a thousand, five hundred, a hundred? Probably not as many as you think. Not that I've been really looking for it. I just, in my mind, I'm just thinking $20 feels like a steal on that. Okay, this was an eBay lot was, uh, oh, thank you, Bigby. This was uh, $72. I think it's more Adventure Time books. Very Adventure Time heavy haul today. Yeah, so this is, again, how many books? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So like $7 each, I think I said. What did, I just threw it to the side. What did I say I paid on that? I paid, ah, uh, whatever. You'll remember. So, I, cheap enough, though. Um, if it has first appearances of any character becomes popular, yes. Uh, if it's just because they're pride books, not really. You know, it's just because they make a lot of them. So, there's not any specific one that's that special. But if it's... Um, <laughs> or like Zardos, the movie. Just a big head. Uh, but yeah, if there's a first appearance of a character or a first relationship between two um, gay characters, I think that could give it value. You just never know in the world of things. Uh, so again, first appearance of Fiona and Cake, the 1 in 15 ratio. And then these are like some of the later issues in the series. This is number 2, 1 in 15 or 1 in 25. This is number 5, again the ratio. This is... Uh, Number six, again, the ratio. Uh, this is a, I think this is a con exclusive. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a reason for the first ones to be um, any valuable or not. It's only if it's going to be like a first appearance or, a, or an important event. Uh, so this one, I think they only made 500 copies. But this is also the first appearance of Fiona and Cake. So this is probably one of the rarer ones. But I don't like the cover art as much. I think it's not as nice cover art. So for me, my bet is the 1 in 30 is the one that I think will have the best value long term. But I'm still happy to have a limited to 500 first appearance. Uh, and then these are all store exclusives. I don't remember which issues are which, but I think all these are awesome. I love these just uh, portrait issues. I think they're all super cool. I think that one is number two. This one might be the number one. So this might be her first appearance again. But a later printing. I don't think it's a first print. Uh, yeah, this is number one. But I think this is like a second or third print that they did later on. Uh, yeah, I think this one came out like a year later. So it's like a second print, but it was a store exclusive. So I just, I, I, I love Adventure Time Comics. I've been collecting them for years. And I love getting kind of the rare exclusive ones. Because I think there's just no appreciation for them at the moment. So they're still relatively cheap. I feel like these were all kind of a steal. I feel like all these should be like... You know, fifty hundred dollar books. At least her first appearance, or the reprint of her first appearance. Okay, really happy with those. Those are cool. As you can see, I was trying not to repeat stuff too much. I was trying to get a variety of stuff. Try to fill in my collection with things I needed, and only certain ones I was trying to spec on a little bit. Um, of what series? Sure, there's a lot of covers I don't like, but I um. I'm showing you stuff I bought on purpose that I wanted, that I liked. <laughs> so I'm showing you stuff I think is amazing. I could pull out some awful covers if you want. Uh, uh, well, all right, now this stack looks pretty good. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm looking at an actually decent stack over here. Okay, I can't find bad covers within this reach. <laughs> yeah, uh... Yeah, you never know. You never know. I just, I love Adventure Time, so I'm willing to put a lot of money into it. I'm 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 specking hard on Adventure Time, just because I love it so much. And it's like, if it never goes anywhere, I don't care. It's still Adventure Time. And here's the thing: I used to buy lots of like a hundred, 
And um, I would sell off the duplicates for like double or triple what I paid so that I could keep the ones I wanted for free. And they sold well. I sold for years. So I feel like as it becomes a more mature um, nostalgic thing, it'll be easier to sell them for five bucks. I don't think I'll lose money on them because I'm paying, you know, maybe $10 now for the Virgin variants. But I have a feeling they'll have a great value in the future. So either I break even in five, 10 years and I haven't lost anything or it goes up in value. I just don't see a downside. I like speculating on things where I don't see a downside, right? If it's something that's super hot right now that the price has jumped, I don't want to spec on that because I think it's too late. I like buying stuff before it kind of jumps. I like to get, oh, is Donald, are you still here? I have Donald's package. I don't know if he's still here or not. I just realized I still had it, but he might be sleeping. Okay, this was, uh, oh, 18 comics for $81. This was $4 a piece. Four bucks, another um, Adventure Time pile. All right. Every time I bump the phone, it kind of disconnects for a second. Okay, so more Adventure Time with Fiona Cake. I was just, because the new series just came out, I was like, this was two weeks before the series came out. I was looking at prices and nothing really seemed to be jumping much. Uh, it might have been a little bit higher, but it wasn't like, you know, this lot was a $4 a piece. I feel like this is a, her first appearance Phantom variant. This one is a rare version of her first appearance. I feel like that should be a lot more. This is the one and 30 of her first appearance. Like I said, I bought the 9.8 for 210, but like this for $5, I feel like this book could be worth hundreds of dollars one day. This is the one in 15 variant. This is the one in uh, 25 variant or 20, I think. I know, well, only problem is anytime I go negative, people get mad at me. <laughs> right? Like, uh, uh, this is, I don't actually didn't have this one. Second print and number two. Uh, more one in 15 or one in 25. Number three. Like, I just, I feel like these are so just. You feel like this stuff should be jumping in value with the new series, but we'll see. Maybe the new series isn't good yet. Oh, Donald, you're here. Okay, I'll, we're going to go through Donald's box in a second. Uh, so, yeah, all these are beautiful. Adventure Time. I like the ratio. See, I don't mind paying more per book if it has a lot of these Virgin Variants stuff because these are all like 1 in 25. These really should not be $5, $10 books. These should be $20 books. Uh, number five. Number five. I love that cover. That cover's cute. Yeah, all these covers are super cute. Love that lot. That was a great lot, actually. Uh, so, well, here's the thing. I like making fun of bad covers, but there's always that one or two people that get, like, really offended because they really love, like, some really bad 1980s indie book. I, uh... I don't know. I just... I remember there was one little handful of really bad indie stuff, like, really low that, uh... I was kind of making fun of it because I thought it just looked so bad. And I really had like five people rage quit my channel. And one guy's like, I fucking buy this shit over Adam Hughes any day. I'm just like, okay. Like, I, I didn't understand the the love for that stuff. But, you know, some people, I the thing, you can't do comics wrong. If you love bad artwork, that's okay. You can you can collect bad artwork. If you love um, cheesy popular stuff, that's okay. You can love cheesy popular stuff. I, as long as you love comics, it's like, who, who cares? Who cares if someone likes your comic the most? Right? I love Ziggy. Who loves Ziggy? Ziggy is such a not-so-popular character anymore. Like, when I was a kid, he was kind of popular. Most people don't give a shit about Ziggy anymore. I still love Ziggy, right? So, you know what? I'm going to enjoy Ziggy. I don't care if other people don't like it. So, if you like something that's kind of, like, janky that other people don't like, that's fine. As a, I used to get these big debates with my best friend in high school about Bob Ross. I was like, I like Bob Ross. And he was like, Bob, he was going to art school at the time in college. And he's like, no, Bob Ross is not art. I'm like, but my point was, art is subjective to who likes it. He's like, yeah, but some stuff is definitely art. You can prove it just be, by, you know, whatever. It's popular in the world of artists. I'm like, yeah, but if you're, you know, someone who loves Bob Ross, but you don't like Basquiat, doesn't make you... Um, any less to you, right? To the person who likes Bob Ross and not Basquiat doesn't mean Basquiat's not an artist, but also doesn't mean that, uh, you know, to them you can sway their opinion. It's like what people like is what people like. You know, and it's a lot of people put so much energy into trying to uh, change people's minds on things that they like, and I'm just like, as long as you're not harming anyone. Oh, I need a scissor for this package. Forgot to open it, and I lost my scissor. Oh, wait, do I have? Oh, yeah, I have a little knife over there. Got a 
uh, I mean, I've told my Ziggy story lots of times. I'll tell again. So, uh, here, we'll put some Ziggy up. So when I was a little boy, I absolutely loved Snoopy. I would buy the Snoopy wardrobes. I, I'm talking like five years old, maybe. Snoopy was my thing when I was real little. And um, I think it's because Snoop, my mom grew up with Snoopy. My mom was born in 51. So Snoopy was like, just when she was born, Snoopy came out. So she grew up with Snoopy. So she probably brought that Snoopy love to my life. Uh, but it was two. Well, let's see, 1988. I'm saying 2000. No, 19, I'm one of those 1900 people. <laughs> I'm an old antique. Um, so it was 1982 or three, And we would go to Ocean Grove in New Jersey each year for vacation for, to the beach. And by Ocean Grove, there would be Asbury Park, which was a fun little amusement park town. And uh, we'd go, and I loved playing the coin pusher games, right? Where you put the qu quarters in, it'll push, and it would make that, like, doom, doom, doom sound as the coins would pop out the tokens. And yeah, arc subjective. It really, one person loves a banana taped to the wall, and another person like me thinks it's completely stupid. Why pay $150 for $150,000 for them? Like, I don't understand it. But, you know, whatever you like for you is good for you, right? I love my mother doesn't mean I have to love everyone's mother. And you can't persuade me otherwise. <laughs> right? It makes sense. So, um,. 1982, I, I had a whole bunch of those tokens and tickets and all that stuff. And I went to the um, prize checkout. And uh, I didn't want to buy the candy and all this stuff. But I saw a Ziggy doll there. And I was able to buy a Ziggy doll with my points. And that Ziggy doll became my best buddy. I took him everywhere. I love that thing. I played with him. It was cool that I won him. I felt like I got him for free. Obviously, my parents paid for him by giving me money to win. But I love that guy. I took him outside in the mud and I, um, you know, I destroyed him. And, got, and then one day I went to a friend's house and he got lost. And I have a feeling uh, my friend's mother thought he was kind of absolutely filthy and disgusting that, uh, oh man, look how cool this is. It's a Ninja Turtle advertisement from the Chicago Sun, Ninja Turtles number one. Love that movie when I, I was, uh, what, 14 when that came out? 13, 14, love that. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, Donald. I like that little extra thing. Um, so it, so I, I love that doll, but it got lost that day. She probably threw it out because it's so disgusting. And I, I'm tra I'm still traumatized. It was like the first death in my family. And, um, so after that, I was just really upset. And like, a, maybe a few weeks later, a few days later, whatever, I was probably crying and screaming for like a month straight, asking every day if they had found it. And, um, so my mom took me to Toys R Us and I picked out two more. And um, absolutely loved them, and I played with those. So Ziggy just became my favorite toy as a kid. Ziggy played with my GI Joes and Transformers, and um, you know my my Shogun Godzilla was Ziggy. My GI Joe had Ziggy in the Jeep. My Transformers had had Ziggy protecting them. Uh, my you know Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull had Ziggy hanging out inside. Ziggy was just the main character in my childhood. So that's why I love Ziggy. I don't know, and I feel like the cartoons relate to me every day. Like, like, once every month, there's at least one cartoon that exactly represents what I'm going through at the moment. All right, so Donald is trading me again another, I think, 130 of these. Um, so what these are was the uh, Ziggy and Friends would send Univer or Universal Press would send out these uh, Ziggy cartoons for the week to the newspapers. And the newspapers would use these, copy them to reprint the ad. Uh, so Donald's father worked for the newspaper. So uh, he asked his father to start collecting them or bringing them home. So he put together this amazing collection. So I'm giving him like about two bucks each in trade. Uh, maybe a little bit more in some cases. And I, I just think these are absolutely amazing. So I just like hundred and uh, no. Let's see. I gave him $30 extra value the last batch. So I think he's supposed to give me 65 I think. Not hundred percent sure of these, but I love these. These are just like for a while there, I was collecting all the newspaper comic books, but I almost rather have each cartoon in this version since these are a much higher quality printing of them, and just having like with the release information, everything about these just feels so iconic and uh, just represent a, a time and place. Nineteen eighty six, March tenth. So that was the year I turned ten. 10 was right. 86 is right when I was hardcore into my Ziggy uh, enjoyment, I guess. <laughs> my Ziggy love. 
you know, I had, I, for Christmas, my mom would get me Ziggy's. For Halloween, I would get Ziggy's. For uh, Valentine's Day, I would get Ziggy's. For Easter, I would get Ziggy's. I get Ziggy's every holiday. And I, um, I just, Ziggy has always been one of my favorite things. And I just, I remember also, I just like, in the late 90s, when I started collecting Ziggy, it was just something I enjoyed in my childhood that I could collect relatively affordably compared to a lot of other things that are so expensive. Oh, I keep losing my backdrop. I need a better studio. Man, I really need... I need... I need a lot more money. <laughs> I need a small fortune just so I can entertain you guys. <laughs> I want... I need like a 5,000 square foot studio that has space set up so I can live stream and film and show my collection so I can organize and enjoy everything. I just like... I feel like I'm in such a janky situation that it stresses me out and makes me kind of sad. I hate that it's so difficult to entertain you guys. <laughs> Man, I love these though. These are freaking amazing. Donald, Donald's amazing, dude. I think he's happy. The last batch, I traded him like 90 something Jonah Hex for the last 50. Yeah, I have thousands of Valentine's cards. I have uh, Ziggy cards from all over the world. I have the boxes of Valentine's cards. I think there's like 10 or 15 different boxes. I should have all of them. They're semi-common, so it's not something that I go crazy to get, but I probably had them all over the years. Um, but yeah, Don look, last batch I sold, sent Donald, I think 90-something Jonah Hex books. Ended up, he only needed 17 of them, but um, where he's from, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, Westerns are way more in demand, so he's actually going to trade them for books he wants locally. I do. I have the world's largest, definitely by far, because I don't think there's anyone even close there's one person I think might have close to the total number of things, but there's a huge difference between total number and um, different. I have different items. He, he, him and his wife back in the 80s and 90s, they would buy out stores. That, like when a uh, Hallmark would close down, they would buy out the uh, Ziggy store or, or uh, all the Ziggy stuff from the store. So they don't have displays and stuff. So I think they have a lot of duplicates. So they might have a larger volume of stuff. But they don't have as many different items. So yeah, there's I think these are 13 each. One, two, three. Oh, that's seven, three, four, five, fifty, sixty-five, seventy-two. So I actually might owe Donald a little bit more. Oh Joe Cole, yeah, Joe Cole is cool. I was a huge Snoopy fan. I'm still a huge Snoopy fan. Snoopy was one of my childhood favorites as well. But Ziggy took over. Ziggy became the, the king of the castle. All right, Donald, thank you so much for the, the trade. I'll, I got to start working on sorting my um, Marvel Westerns from the 70s and 60s. Uh, oh, all right, now this is a speculator purchase for sure. This was 134 bucks for, uh, I don't know, 11 books. Oh, wait, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 bucks. I, I appreciate that, Big B. Donald, is there anything else you need me to work through? I know you wanted um, some Harvey stuff. I got your list. I'll have to double check your list to see because I'm pretty sure I have a big chunk of uh, Western uh, Marvel Westerns, but I don't know if I have enough to cover one full batch. And do you, how many was that? Was it... Do you remember what the count was on these? So I just I get in mind how much I owe you. Uh, 13, 26... 35, no, 36, 40, 49, 59, 59, 66, 70, 79? Does that sound correct? 79, which would be uh, like 160, just under 160. Uh, and how much did I, I say you owed me over? I don't think you owed me that much over. So I probably owe you like 130-ish, I think. Does that sound right, Donald? I'll double check. I mean, I'll, if, if not, I'll go over a little bit. All right, so these this was a total speculator buy. I couldn't believe this guy had this many of them. Uh, they were like $15 each, I want to say, but they look like all high-ish grade copies. Like, I don't see any spine ticks, so it's probably a near mint. Could be a 9.8 candidate, maybe a 9.694. But yeah, this is the 1 in 25 ratio. So there's 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those. 
So nine, one in 25, first appearance of Fiona and Cake. $15 each. I think that has a lot of long-term value of potential. This is the one in 15. There's one, two, three, four of those. Her first appearance, one in 15. Again, I think these are undervalued. I th there's barely any of those graded. Very few. So who knows? I don't know how well the show is doing. I need to watch it still. It's on my to-do list. But I have really, really long-term value. Uh, 50 extra this time. Okay, 50. Okay. So I owe you 150 then. Right? Yeah. Because I said 30, 180. Yeah, yeah. So I owe you $50 extra. So I owe you 150. All right. I'll see what I can do. Hopefully I can f relatively quickly find you a nice, beautiful pile to trade. Uh, and I, I I appreciate the trades for such rare Ziggy stuff. It's absolutely amazing to me. Okay. All right. I'll move this out. Move this out. Uh, oh, I have a whole nother box over here that we didn't even get to. Okay, give me one second here. I'm going to put beautiful Siggy back up as I kind of put some stuff to the side here so I can get to the next box. I'm going to grab, I have another big old box full and then I don't even know what else I got to show you guys, but I know there's a lot more to go through. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think it's they probably just overbought them or they got a closeout back in the day. So I, uh, I for years I've bought big clearance from them. I they must have just bought out a big like overstock at some point, and that's why they have so much. So it feels like they're overstocked right now, but I don't think they printed that many, and they probably don't sell often enough that now it feels like a lot. But in like five ten years, whenever that dries up, that's it. It'll be dried up. Uh, oh, okay. This is a fun box. It looks like I have a lot more Bryze comics, which is fun. Uh, okay, so this is another couple Bryze comics slabs. Let's see what we got. Man, I'm making such a uh, trash pile. Okay, what it says? I said I paid... Uh, oh, I gotta find my invoice. Okay, this is fun. This is uh, black number one. This is the series about a world where only black people get superpowers. And it sounded like, you know, it's a super interesting sounding series. I think they're talking about doing a show on it. So I figured uh, first appearance of the characters, 9-8-86-35. thought that was a pretty good comic. I do kind of spec on black a little bit when I find them. And then uh, this is the... Either the second print or the B variant. This one was 37 bucks. So this one I actually haven't seen before. That one I have. That one I haven't seen before. So I'm... Um... Well, thank you, Donald. I appreciate that. It's going into the world's largest collection of Ziggy's. I don't know if there's any better place. The only other place that would be better is... Um, the... Um, was it? The billy ireland museum that's it the billy ireland museum would probably be the only place that would be better <laughs> maybe my collection will head there one day if i ever get rich enough to uh, donate it so yeah all right and we got two cool black books I like those and honestly i would love to have a museum at some point where i can share all the collection with people it would be cool to have like just a a wall covered in those. I think that would look so neat. All right, good night, Big B. It's late. I've been streaming a lot. This is a long stream today. I can't believe you guys have been hanging out with me for this long. <laughs> uh, this is one of my longest comic streams ever. I just, I really, really, really wanted to get through all my packages so that I could put everything away safely. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of Twig in my collection. I like Twig. I have all the Peach Momoko variants and uh, a few of the regular ones when I see them. I pick them up when they're cheap. Uh, oh, that's more Adventure Time. Wow, there's just a lot more Adventure Time here. I'm trying to find something that's not Adventure Time. So it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, oh, all right. Ooh, I got... Okay, this is fun. This is a whole big Comics Elite package. So this one I paid... Uh, 
300 bucks total, I think. So I averaged $9 a piece on this. I think it was $9 a piece on average. So I don't remember what it was. I just remember there's a lot of stuff. I kept buying from them that night. So there's probably a lot of stuff I really, really wanted. Or I just thought was really neat. Okay, let's pull back a little bit. Make this slightly. There we go. Okay, we got a Daredevil 14. This is the 1 in 25 variant. So this was, none of these are marked, so I can't tell you exactly what I paid for each. But it did average out to $9. It looks like somewhere like 3 to 5 and somewhere like 40 So some stuff was more than the other. I just, I don't know what each individual price was. Uh, we have the Night Terrors Nightwing. This is the 1 in 50 variant. I thought that was really cool. I like in the really rare variants when I can. Uh, Nightwing number 2, the 1 in 25 variant. A Night Terror Superman. What an awesome cover. That's the 1 in 25 variant. Um, Night Terror's Punchline number 2, the 1 in 25 variant. I do love buying the really good ratios. Uh, this is fun because they had a lot of newer, rare releases. And I think that's why I bought a lot this night. Uh, really beautiful lyrics, Betty Page covers. Absolutely love those. I love her artwork. So I thought these were beautiful. Such beautiful covers. Uh, and then the Lisner Better Page set. I think this one was a cheaper set, if I remember correctly. I just grabbed these because they're cheaper. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, Red Sonia, number two. Lee and Hyuk cover. Love and Lee and Hyuk. We got the pair. Those are super cool. Oops, let me slightly adjust. This new tripod's a little bit hard to get it perfect. Okay, there we go. Uh, this one might have been a free throw-in. Uh, I think this is a Jennifer Blood. I forget what ratio that was. Really awesome Dawn Matigue Virgin variant. Uh, oh, it's got a, a limited to 500 copies. 100 were uh, destroyed, so only 400 were left. So this is number 275 out of 400. That's actually pretty cool. I love rare low number books for my favorite artist. Uh, Poison Ivy number one. This is a really cool Ariel Diaz Spider Man number 25. I've been become a big fan of her art recently, so I've been trying to grab everything she's done. Uh, this really awesome Ryan Brown Spider Man cover. Absolutely love that. Uh, oh, I love this little note she included. She said, I love watching your videos. I hope you like the comics and thank you for supporting us. Maria, that was really sweet. I love getting little notes like that. It gives you night terrors. Oh, yeah, I think that was the point. Uh, I hate Fairyland number eight. A really, really cute Peach and Malco cover. Absolutely love that cover. It's got everything. It's got the cuteness. It's got the fun swirliness. It's got everything I love about Peach. Uh, F Fairyland number eight. That one's super cool. Love that. Uh, is that that the bean cover? Not sure of that artist. Uh, I hate Fairyland number eight. Love those covers. Um, Amika Soroyan. Uh, what's his name? Jeez, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, uh, oh, jeez, my brain just went blank. So that duck, that we know, everyone knows the duck. Jeez, I can't remember anything. Someone's going to tell me in four seconds who that is. Um, uh, G. Ang, Wolverine, uh, Cyclops, Vampire cover. That is really dope. Uh, Darkwing Duck. Jeez, my brain. Okay, a Venomized uh, ve um, Dr. Doom. That one's super cool. Uh, really cool Miko Sarayan Deadpool. Love that. Uh, Vampirella, number one. This one might have been just a cheap one. Uh, Ivan Tao, Punchline cover. Love that. Amazing Spider-Man, number 14. I don't remember if these were ratios or not. Uh, Lisner, Vampirella cover is awesome. Uh, I think these next two were a lot, but I bought it for the Josh Burns cover. Really love Josh Burns. Yeah, Darkwing Duck. Jeez, my brain. Really, really went blank. Uh, this beautiful Ryan Brown book that's actually signed by him with a certificate on the back. That I thought was really cool. The, it might have been $40 for this pair because there's uh, two different Ryan Brown covers signed by him. Absolutely stunning covers. Love those. Uh, Jiang, Amazing Spider-Man 19. Uh, Ryan Brown. Uh, who is that? Death Metal. Dark Knight's Metal. Death Metal. Really awesome. I really like Ryan Brown artwork. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, Ryan Brown, Spidey cover, gorgeous cover, and another Ryan Brown Spidey cover. All right, really cool stuff. Really think these are amazing. I love buying modern stuff that has just beautiful artwork. It just brings me so much joy to find such gorgeous comic books to add to the collection. I'm a cover, as you can see, I'm a cover buyer. When I'm actually buying specifically for the collection, I usually buy just the best covers I can find. 
Then I buy key. I buy buy the cover first, then key issues next. Uh, this was. I actually think I might put some, a bunch of these in the store because they were super cheap. I paid. Uh, all right, so these were five packs. So I paid between eight and twenty dollars per five pack. So that's like a dollar fifty to five dollars each. So they like that. Super awesome. We have a Marceline cover, a Marceline Princess Bubblegum cover. I love this uh, San Diego Comic Con cover, Marceline. Um, I think that's. Oh yeah, that's another Marceline cover, and another Marceline cover. So I'm not sure which one. Uh, I paid twenty for the pack. So one I paid four dollars a book. The rest I paid a dollar sixty. Uh, these version variants in the past I've sold for like eight to ten dollars in my shop. So these I feel like I'm going to keep one of each and then sell off the duplicates because I don't really think I want to spec on these just because I don't know how well this set will do since it's not their first appearance. But I still think they're amazing and I'm pretty sure I needed all of them. So I was actually really happy to get those. Oh, I love mini toys. Mini toys are something I absolutely love. Some of my favorite mini toys are the um, Micro Machine Action Force figures from the 90s. They made these little mini, they look like actual like Star Wars figures that went into ships, but they were like tiny. I love collecting those figures. I'm really bad because every time uh, I buy those ships, like at a garage sale for my shop, I take the figures out and I just sell the vehicle by itself. <laughs> I'm really bad like that, but because I love those little figures, I probably have a hundred of them. It's something that I go on my way to collect. But I also, I love micro machines. I just love, I collect a lot of like doll accessories. If I think it's like a cool little miniature thing. I, anything small, I love. I absolutely love small little things. Cause it's just cool. You can put them with your, um, your like hot toys. You can make cool little dioramas. Uh, okay, so this was a whole pack of books. I paid $64.89. So these were cheaper. I think this is a lot where I'm going to go through it, pull out what I need for my collection and sell the rest for like five bucks a piece. I just, I guess I was just in the mood to restock my shop with Adventure Time and kind of do the thing that I used to do where I sold off the duplicates to uh, kind of pay for the keepers, which I, I love Adventure Time. So I love doing that because it's a fun way to kind of collect for free. So Adventure Time 31, 32, 33. I didn't remember which of these I needed. I know there's a couple I needed. I need a lot of the um, subscriber copies from the later numbers as well. Uh, 36, that cover is awesome. 37. All these actually have really... Oh, yeah. See, this is a subscription copy. So this is... I needed these. Because the subscription ones are the ones that are a lot harder to get. Uh, this one says Hillgrove. So that actually might be a rare variant as well. Uh, yeah, this is a subscription. So I was buying this lot just for these subscription covers. Because these are the rarer ones. And you just don't see them as often. Uh, number 39. Uh, number 40. That's a Paul Pope cover. That's actually really cool that he did a cover for them. Uh, number 41. Oh, I guess that's just the artist that's written on the thing. Uh, annual number one. Or 2013 annual, 2014 annual. Okay, and then we have another batch. So I, I'm pretty sure I paid like $1.50 on these. So I'm pretty sure any duplicates, if I put them out for 5 bucks, they'll sell well. And then I get to add all the kind of rarer ones to my collection. I might do that a lot until I finish the collection. I would love to get the rest of all the mentor time I need. But like I said, I think I have a long box full at the moment. Uh, number 24, number 25, number 26, 27, 28, 29, uh, 12. I might start holding on to some of the earlier numbers. Number 16, like maybe not 12, maybe 10, 10 and under, I think. I've always kept the number ones. I think I have five or six number ones. Those are the hardest to come by. Uh, number 19, but the under 10s I might start keeping as well. Not 100% sure yet. Number 20, number 21, number 22. Pretty sure these numbers I have most of these though. 23, so I probably just bought this lot. I paid a lot for the lot, but I knew I could sell off the duplicates for like five bucks a piece and I needed the subscription ones. That was the main reason why I bought that lot. Those subscription ones are pretty hard to find because I think they're just way lower print runs. Okay, Venture Time, Venture Time, Venture Time. Is everyone going to sleepy? What time is it? It must be really late. I'm going to sleepy, but I still have a few more boxes to go through. Let's just finish this up and then I'll call it a night. I got another Bryce Comics. This one was $47.35. This was... Uh... Yeah, the Nirvana, definitely the Nirvana cover. Any of the really cool homage covers people look for. 
So this was, uh, what is this? Okay, so this is uh, lock and key number one. I thought that was really cool. I really like the lock and key TV series. So this is the dynamic forces version number one. So this is the rare version. It's only a 9.6, not a 9.8, but it was 40, what did I say, 47? I thought that was actually quite a good price for this one. And it's got the original certificate on the back, limited to 3,000 copies. So this is probably the rare version of number one. I love the show. There's no spec. The show's over. The spec. There's no spec for a show that's over. But I really like the show. So I don't mind picking up things that I love. I don't need the Ollie spec. In fact, I'm more likely to buy something for a show that ended that I really love. To just remind me of how much I love the show than uh, buy something of a show I don't know about yet. Because it might be worth something. That's how I collect. Uh, oh, Okay. This says it's a $44.20. So this was a uh, Comics Elite Mystery Box. Uh, I don't know if I love the Mystery Box. Honestly, I usually don't buy Mystery Boxes because I don't like them. But um, what I noticed is that they were giving away one of these uh, folio boxes, which cost about 10 bucks with it. So I was like, you know what? No matter what, I'm getting a $10 box kind of for free. So I decided to get it. Yeah, right. No, regular show is awesome. Adventure Time is awesome. All that early 2010 shows, I think, is going to have a really huge um, nostalgia blast in about five years. Because all the people that were like 8 to 12, 10 years ago, are now, what, 18 to 22. So they have to get through college first, get those first jobs. And then, uh, like, when they're 25 or 30, they'll start buying that stuff and, like, geeking out over it. So just like Pokemon, when Pokemon Go exploded, what, like, seven, eight years ago? That's when Pokemon was uh, 12 years old. So now Adventure of Time is 10 years old. So give it two or three more years, you're going to hit that first kind of wave of nostalgia. So I really feel like all Adventure of Time, regular show stuff, all that stuff is going to start really picking up in demand and value in the next like five years or so. And then like 10 years from now is when it will really be at its peak. Just kind of like how Pokemon in the last couple of years has been at its peak. So all right, we got this portfolio. I won a free comic book and then I bought a... Uh, a mystery pack i do my dream would be to have a whole library full of these to put all my comics into but that would be expensive but it'd be so much fun to have the comics in a much easier way to organize them so i gotta figure out what was what i know i want a free thing and i think that's also why i bought one of these packs just to see, because the shipping was cheaper so i might have won that and then i think the rest of these were the the mystery box oh that's a really awesome ryan brown cover love that what i like about ryan brown it is digital but i like that he does a depth of field blurring so everything looks a lot more three-dimensional i love that uh jiang wakanda forever number one this beautiful mark brooks cover i love that one uh spider-man 41 it looks like a mark texera cover but i'm not sure who signed it or maybe that's uh is that a Jay Lee cover? It could be Jay Lee. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, oh, no. You know what? That's the one. I won that one for free. So that was the giveaway. And then the rest of these were 40 bucks. Three, six bucks for 40. Uh, I'm not sure who signed it. I mean, it's not a terrible box. I'm not like super thrilled with it, but I thought it was pretty awesome. Uh, I don't use the BCW plastic boxes because I have too many comic books. And um, they're heavy. So I don't really find the, the, the desire, but it is Jay Lee. Okay, Jay, I do like Jay Lee. So, all right, that's kind of cool, actually. I'm a big fan of Jay Lee. So that's a, um, I like his newer work, though. That 90s work I didn't like as much. Uh, no, I didn't, I liked the show. I didn't read the book. If the book's better, maybe I should go and read the book. But I did really like the Lock and Key show a lot. So if I like the show a lot, then the comic, you know, if it's better, I'll like that even more. Okay, this was five comics for 20 bucks. Ah, oh, yeah. Adventure Time. I went crazy this week, Adventure Time. You know what was? I had that FOMO feeling like if the show is really good, the prices of these will skyrocket. I've been kind of putting off buying the rest. So like $4 a piece on Virgin Variants, Adventure Time. These are all like 1 in 25 Virgin Variants. I feel like that's a steal. These are easily, you know, $10, $15 books in my mind. And I, I love this one. This one is awesome. How cool are those, right? Like, someone who loves Adventure Time, a 1 in 25 means there's probably less than a 1,000 each of these. Uh, you know, when nostalgia kicks in, like, five years, these could be $50 books a piece. Honestly, if you like Adventure Time, now's the, you only have a couple of years left before the prices really start going crazy, I think. I could be wrong, but in my experience, that's how I feel. Like, we have, like, a one- or two-year window, 
And with the new show that just came out, I really felt like that window was going to shrink. Uh, okay, we got another prize box. Two more books. Again, like I said, I usually like to buy one or two books at each of prize shows just so I can enter into the uh, buyer giveaway at the end. And uh, it's just a lot of fun, and his prices are relatively good. So this is a book I've spec'd on a bunch of times. I have several 9.8s now of it. So we have War of the Realms, uh, New Agents of Atlas. Yeah, and the art is absolutely gorgeous on the Adventure Time. I love them. Uh, so we have New Agents of Atlas. I paid $76 for this. This is the first appearance of Luna Snow, uh, Wave, Crescent, and Arrow. Now, I really like the Arrow character. So I've been... And uh, Luna Snow is pretty cool too. So I like this book. To me, this is an awesome spec book. Just because it has a lot of cool Asian characters. If they ever do a, a movie or show that really makes this team popular, I could see the value of this book really jumping. Right? Like, if they do a show and she's super popular, or a movie and she's super popular, I could easily see... Or they might... What if they do two, three, four, five different shows of all these characters? It could be a thing where five, ten years from now, um, that book is just a $500 book. So I like picking them up when I see them relatively cheap. And I like the character. So it's like one of those characters I don't mind putting some money into. I did that with Miles Morales. I have like 10 first prints of his first appearance. Uh, like 10 second prints. And then 10 or so oddball other variants of it. I don't have the really good one. But uh, good night, Ronnie. Take care. Oh, that's cool. The Amazing World of Gumball Belt. That's another show that I could see being very nostalgic. Uh, so Eve, number one, I got this one for 33 bucks. I just really like the cover. It's a uh, Merck and Delpho artwork. I love her artwork. So 33 bucks, I was like, why not? That's like the cost to get it graded. I don't know how rare the book is. It might be a dollar book, but get it graded in Merck and Delpho. I love her artwork. So I was happy with that. It has a high print run, but so does the Miles Morales book. How many print run, uh, how many did they make of that? 50,000, 100,000? So even though this has a, a high print run, it is Marvel characters. So... And it's, with Marvel, a lot of stuff is high print runs, but there's a lot of demand for it. So I could see, still see that being a four or $500 book. You know, New Mutants number 98, first Deadpool. How many are those? 20,000 on the census? Like that's a mega high print run. But people are still paying a ton of money for the 98s for him because people love Deadpool. Now, I don't know. Maybe the characters will suck in the movies and no one will like it. Or maybe it'll become, you know, something super popular in the future. You just never know. No, I don't want to trade. I, 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 I'm keeping Miles Morales till I'm ready to retire because he's this generation Spider-Man. So I could see those books jumping back up in value. I might sell them the next big wave when the economy picks up again in like five years. But for now, I'm just holding on to that. There's no reason for me to get rid of them. I think it's a good store of value. Even though the value is like half of what it was a year ago, I still think it's a good store of value because everything's a half. If I put the money... Um, if I uh, what do I call it? if I put the money into the stock market, I probably would have lost as just as much money. So I it's fine. I'm holding on to them for now. Okay, this was thirteen bucks. I just got a fun little vinyl Ziggy book. It's like a photo album. I love these nineteen seventies uh, vinyl books. I just it's such a old school looking object. I absolutely love it. They doubled the orders for free. What, why did they double them? Was there or they just they wanted to come out there? They wanted um, more of that book out there so the shop can introduce those characters. That kind of makes sense. Okay, this is box here was $26.49. What was this? This was how many books? One, two, three, four, five, six books. Four dollars a book. I was a little bit high, but we have a first print number four, Venture Time. Uh, first print number five, or the B cover first print. Third print number one, so their first appearance, but the third print. Not a super valuable book, like a five to ten dollar book, but great spec book. Uh, number six, second print. I might not have the second print one on that. Uh, first print, cover B. Number three, love that cover. Such a cute cover. Uh, second print, number two. So I got these just because there's a lot of low numbers. I thought four dollars a piece, great value on those. Yeah, second and third prints are really hard to find. So I will grab those. Are you you mean of um? Of the New Ages Atlas. Yeah, I have all the second and third prints too. I have a whole bunch. I have the Virgin variant that has... Um, forget. I have. I think there's just one issue I'm missing. 
No, I've only bought six of the 200 boxes so far. I'm going to work my way through the, the 200 boxes as he's letting me, you know, buy some. He let me pick and choose the best books I could find in the first batch. And uh, I'm selling through that. And then this week, I'm going to buy the next batch, which might be 20 boxes the second time. Or I'm going to aim for something like 20 boxes. I'll go. He's letting me work my way through it. So basically, so far in four days, I've sold three or $400 out of the first 2000 I spent. So that's 20% of my money in just a handful of days. It hasn't even been a full week yet. And I haven't even put everything out yet. I only priced out uh, one box for the weekend and then another box today. So I'm only two out of six boxes into the store. So I just, it was kind of a test and I'm really happy with the returns and what I was able to pull out the first 10%. So it's looking really good so far. Okay, this lot was uh, $81 for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 bucks. 18 bucks. So that's uh, $5 each? 50? No, four, like four, four fifty each, something like that. Uh, you, you can get like an 8 for four for 600 if you want a higher grade one. I, uh, I, I think we're kind of at the bottom right now. I mean, it might drop a little teeny bit, but I can't imagine that book not being on demand long term. Yeah, first appearance of Miles Morales, major animated movies. Uh, just he's such an iconic character at this point. Once he shows up in the actual live action, it could it could be game over. Honestly, I mean maybe not. I don't know. I uh, definitely it's a book now though that I would the prices are getting a lot better than they were a year ago. So it's definitely worth thinking about it. Like if you want to pay six hundred and you can get like a nine two for seven hundred, maybe don't let that hundred dollars be the difference between not owning it. You know, I've done that all my life. I Daredevil number one, I bid 50 bucks on it and went for 55. I didn't get it. I bid $200 for it and went for 205. I didn't get it. Uh, at one point, it was 400 bucks. Uh, no, it went to $600. I offered $400 to the guy. He almost sold to me. Then he decided not to. And then a week later, the show was announced and it doubled in value. I finally got my Daredevil number one. It cost me $4,400. So do I regret not buying it for 50? I kind of do. Right? Because if I if you spend six hundred, the downside is what does it go down to? Three hundred, two hundred, a hundred. It's first appearance of Miles Morales. I can't imagine it going down that low. There's always going to be demand for it. There's there's a lot of them out there, but not you know twenty thousand out there, not millions out there. So if you buy for six hundred, the upside could be you know five thousand dollars in ten years. The downside could be three hundred. I don't think you your downside is that low on that book right now. Hey, Sabuf. Yeah, I, I'm happy you enjoy the older stuff. I love showing the older stuff. Uh, I'm showing a lot of Adventure Time because I went crazy this week just because the new series coming out, I decided I want to buy a bunch just in case because I didn't see any of the prices really spiking yet. So I was like, let me just grab them. Uh, so Adventure of Cake number one is her first appearance in comics, I believe. So I was buying all these slots. These are, the Virgin variants are later issues. Um, but this is her first appearance, the one in 25 ratio. This is her first appearance, one in 15 ratio. Uh, this is her first appearance, one in 30 ratio. So I bought this lot just to get those three ratio variants of her first appearance. And then this is uh, the phantom variant of her first appearance. And then just some regular issues. Uh, I think that's three or four. I think that's five or six. So all these. So I might sell the duplicates of the higher numbers, but all the uh, number ones I'm just holding on to. I think having her first appearance is a good long-term spec. So yeah. Another lot full of Fiona and cake. And these were worthless for the long time. Uh, first made part. Yeah, that's a cool issue. Very cool issue. Very cool issue. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, am I... I'm almost out of things to show, I think. <laughs> this has been a long stream. How long have I been at it? Three, four hours? Have you guys seen a lot of ads? I don't know how many times the ads pop up. I don't know if you've seen like 10 ads, one ad, zero ads. Really don't know how it's working. It seems like they changed it a little bit in the last uh, couple weeks. Get that box. Okay, we did all those. We did that box. And all right, I think we just have two or three more boxes. It's just Adventure Time stuff, so it's not going to be that exciting. I don't think. Uh, we did that box. Okay, just one more big box. It's... Uh, I paid $120. I think it's more adventure time. A couple ads. Okay. So that's good. So 
I think that I, it said something about showing it at every 30 minutes, but based on a viewer's viewership or something like that. So if you've only seen two ads in three hours, I think that's actually very fair. I was just afraid that it was going to start spamming people every like 30 minutes. So I think it, it definitely, it's um, showing you based on your viewership and not like just spamming like crazy. I, I, I kind of hate it when I go on a YouTube channel and like it's got a minute intro and then like just as the video starting, then the ad shows. I'm like, all right, I'm done with this video. I haven't seen any content yet. I've seen the intro and now it's an ad. I don't get that. That's way too quick. You need at least five to 10 minutes in a video before you see an ad. Okay, so this lot was 120. This was uh, 67 books. So this was like $2 a book. So this is more of the normal Adventure Time uh, lots I would buy. Just because this is the kind of stuff, if I put them out in my shop for five bucks, they'll sell. So I like buying these kind of lots so I can sell off the duplicates to pay for the ones I want to keep. And uh, I don't know how much of this I need, but I was in the mood to kind of stock up on Adventure. I like having Adventure Time in the shop just because I love Adventure Time so much. But I also know some of these I needed. Like there's uh, some Virgin variants, which for me, like less than $2 a piece is a steal. Since these are all ratios, like a 1 in 25. Absolutely fun cover too. I love that one. This cover is fantastic. Uh, and some of these I don't think I have yet either. That one I don't think I have yet. So that's a fantastic cover. Uh, some earlier issues, number 12, number 13. The A and B covers I probably have at this point. Uh, this is the 1 in 15 variant. I'm not 100% sure if I have that one, but that one's awesome. BMO cover, another 1 in 15. So they must have had this. See, they were on the wall, $8. Like, how could that not sell for $8? But the thing is, the value hasn't been there yet. So that's it's one of those things where I know it will be. Well, I mean, if they wanted to really do that, they'll put an ad every one minute. And it's more like, it needs to be balanced because I get advertised. You know, the ads are for my channel as well. It helps me pay for my bills and keep the channel running. But I also don't want it to be at the point where it spams people. I want it to be just enough that I'm making maybe like eight to ten dollars every thousand views. That's what I'm looking for. If I get eight to ten dollars and you get like two ads in three hours, I am really happy with that. Oh man, these covers are fantastic. Look at these covers. Maybe I should leave these notes on here just so I remember what they are. <laughs> but I want to look at like that's another thing I really like about these comics is they have so many great works of art on the cover. Like the covers are if you like Adventure Time, I can't imagine you not like this is a, a Chicago. E, uh, C2E2 Comic Con variant. Like, how rare is that? That one they probably printed 500 or 1,000. Like, there's just no demand for these yet. And I think they're just so underrated, honestly. Hi, Estimo. Good morning. Wow, wow, I don't even know what time it is. What time did I start? 10? Wow, is it like 1 in the morning? <laughs> Holy crap, I've been at this a long time. All right, second print. I might be needing some of the second prints. Awesome Virgin variant. Oops. Uh, number nine. Love that. Such a great cover. Oh, a couple of those. So a duplicate. Uh, number nine, cover B. I'm actually not sure if I have that one. Uh, number 10. Man, these are awesome. I absolutely love these. Uh, one to 15. What a great ratio. I don't think I've... I might not have that one. I don't know if I've seen that one. Absolutely love that one. Uh, number 11. Oops, a couple of those. So, yeah, again, I don't mind the duplicates because I'm going to sell all, all the duplicates at, uh, like, five bucks a piece, basically, that kind of cover everything else. Number 11, a couple of those. So the main point was I wanted to buy a bunch, sell a bunch, hopefully break even. If I can break even and then add all the spec books to my collection, I am thrilled. And then all the ones I don't have to my collection, I am thrilled. Okay, number 3C. So that's a low number. That's kind of a rare variant. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a $100 book in five years. Uh, Fiona Cake, 1 in 25, number three. So, yeah, these I picked up a lot of. I'll probably sell the non-number ones. So, like, number three. This one I'll probably sell just because even if it jumps in value, I don't like that cover as much. So, I might go to 20 30 bucks. But if it's, like, a lower, rarer one, I think there's a much higher value chance. Uh, oh, this is fun. The little Comic Fest giveaway of the first issue. That is really neat. Uh, fourth print number one. I do like these later printings of the number ones. Third print number two. Third, uh, second print number three. 
Uh, number four, that might be um, first appearance of Ricardo. Number four, sec uh, second print. Number five, second print. I actually might need some of these later prints. Oh, and this one is all sealed up. Man, I can't believe it's 2 a.m. This is a very long, long haul today. <laughs> I'm glad I did it, though. I had all the stuff backed up that I really wanted to get through so I could put it away properly and process it and get out of the way. So I'm happy. I probably should have broke this up into a couple videos, but I'm just really happy because I'm going to be going really, really deep into um, Street Side Anthony's books. So that's really going to eat up all my time in the night. Oh, that's a really fun Paul Pope cover. Do you like Paul Pope? Uh, oh, we got some Virgin variants. That one's awesome. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. That's uh, 2014 annual with uh, Fiona and Cake. That is cool. Oh, okay. So this is um, first appearance of um, Steven Universe, but the one in 25 ratio. So that one is a really good, strong spec book for me. Uh, okay. That's the Candy Kingdom. Uh, flip side, love that cover. Uh, Bleeding Cool number two. I don't think I've actually seen that one before. That's really cool. Uh, Venture Time Season 11. So some of the newer ones, I actually need a lot of these newer ones. So I'm actually happy to see a bunch of those. That's super cool. Even if these are only like $2 issues, I'm thrilled to get those. Uh, okay, and then this is uh, the 1 in 15. Number three. They got a lot of note on this. So they must have had these on their wall for a while. Like $12 doesn't feel like a bad price on that. But, you know, I'm not shocked in itself for the longest time that Fiona and Cake books just didn't have demand. Uh, so this is the San Diego Comic-Con version of number one. So this is the first appearance of Adventure Time, but the San Diego... This is a terrible cover, but a great rare spec book for first appearance of Adventure Time. I, just, I hate the cover on them, but that's probably one of the rare one. And then this is, uh, I think this is number one, but the blanks. That one actually might be kind of rare too. Oh, the Rick and Morty manga. That's interesting. Is it good? All right. Um, this is... Yeah, I don't know how later this printing... I don't know if this came out first print, like, with uh, the first run, or if this is, like, a second or third print. It could be a first print. This one actually might be quite a valuable one. Um, Sure. As long as you pay a good enough price per box of stuff you buy... You can recover a bad box because you can always bulk sell stuff for like a quarter each, 50 cents. So if you're only paying, uh, so the big collection, I'm supposed to be paying about 40 cents a book. So that's $120 a long box. If I sold those for $60, they would blow out. So it leaves me with a lot of room to clear out all the junk at $60 a box, get half my money back, but then pull out all the stuff of value. And like I said, last week, I, uh, I went through about 20, 22 boxes. I pulled out six. I gave them 2,000 for that six. That means 10% of the boxes yield me six boxes that I was willing to pay $2,000 for, which is 10% of what I'm paying for everything. So I believe that the other 15 boxes or so were all extra filler. That like A lot of that stuff would be 2 or $3, but the overall value is there. Um. Do I care if a light... No, if a light... I, I prefer a licensed comic to be as good or better than the show. Because I want it to be good. I don't want to be shit. Like a cr crappy copy. Uh, I believe... I haven't read these, but I've heard that these are really good. I um I loved reading the Futurama comics when they came out. I thought they were as good as the show. There's Sometimes there's Futurama comics that I remember as television episodes. I'm like, do you remember that episode when this happened? And someone's like, what are you talking about? And then I realized I read it in the comic book. That's how good the comics were. Uh, hi, Ice Gold. I mean, it, there's no way that, wrong way to do comics. If you want to buy comics just to flip them and make a profit, that's okay. I, I don't know if comics are the easiest way to make a profit. I, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, it for anyone that's like, oh, can I just buy and sell comics for a profit? It's a lot of work. I, it's just enjoyable work. So I enjoy it. It's worth the time and effort for me, but just because I enjoy comics so much. But um, I buy comics just, I love, you know, I grab a comic like this. I love the artwork. I love looking at it. I do read them occasionally, not as much as I would like, but I do enjoy reading them. Um, but, you know, comics are comics. I just, I find immense joy in comics in all kinds of ways. Okay. I think I'm going to call it quits because that was the last box. I had a lot of fun. This was amazing. Thank Tina, thank you for hanging out the whole... Who else hung out the whole show? 
I feel like there's a handful of you that must have been here the whole three or four hours. <laughs> you guys rock. You guys are the best. Can you see my face? Let's look at my face. Hello, hello, hello. All right, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I will see you soon. I'll probably be in the shop sometime in the next couple days. I want to actually show you some of the books that I'm pricing out for um, sale. Just so you can see what's there. And I also want to discuss more if anyone wants me to put together. I want to sell short boxes between $1 and $300, depending on what's in it, from Anthony's collection. So if it's like all Green Lantern, it might be like $1, 150 If it's all Deadpool, it might be like 400 That kind of thing. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!